Excuse me. Yeah, sure. Oh, I don't know. Do you know, it's marvellous when you move in your first place. I remember me and Bert. We haven't got a lot of furniture, but, oh, I thought it were wonderful. Oh, I know. Me and Kev, we haven't got a lot either. But Mrs Ogden, she's given us a bed. And we've bought this gas cooker off Terry and Curly. Oh, and we've got some furniture off this little old lady. Well, she lives over Whitefield Roadway, and she's going into an old folks' home, you see, so she's getting shut of her stuff. Hang about, love. I've got more plates than I'll ever use these days. Why don't you pop round and see if there's what you fancy? Oh, thanks, Ivy. I will. OK, well, see, see ya. See ya. See ya, Curly. See ya. What time do you want me and Teddy then? As soon as you like, after you've had your dinner. Right then, well, your cooker's already in the van. We loaded that last night. So what we'll do is we'll drop that off first and then we'll go round to Whitefield Road for the rest of your furniture. Oh, right. Hey, you're going to be careful with it all, aren't you, Carl? Well, of course we will. Hey, it's not antique, is it? No, is it tech? No, it's just old. No, it's not up to much. But it just so happens to be the only furniture I've got. So watch it, you. All right, I'll see you later. See you later, Carl. Hiya. Oh, it's you. You do know today's a bank holiday, don't you? I mean, I would never have thought you were the type for working on a bank holiday. You must be joking. Day of rest, isn't it? Day of fun and frolic for them who's lucky. Pete's not out of bed yet. Always was a lazy git. Even in the army, it took more than a bugle call to get him out of his pit. Usually a sergeant's boot. I'll uh, tell him you're here. Well, uh, there's no rush. I mean, it wasn't really Pete I came to see. It was you. Oh, yeah. Well, it's time we were up anyway. Pete, your mate's here. You, um, say you wanted to see me? Yeah. I thought I'd try and get a few things straightened out. Well, because, uh, you don't like me much, do you? I've never said that. Well, you didn't need to. You seem to think I'm bad news, that I'm going to get Pete into trouble. Well, you've got me wrong. Have I? Look, I'm just pleased to see the lad, that's all. I just want to put a bit of cash in his direction. Look, this door-to-door this -door stuff, it's all legit. There's no knocked-off gear, nothing like that. I admit it's not your trendy lifestyle, and I can see why you want to turn your nose up at it. But it's a living. Look, uh, don't think I'm being snobby when I say this, but going round door-to-door -door isn't the way I want to see Pete spending his life. Well, nor me. And it's not the way I'm going to be spending it either. I'm just doing it till something better turns up. Believe me, I keep my eyes skinned at all times. Fancy a cup of tea? Yeah, that would be great. Both Deirdre Barlow, your caring candidate. Both Deirdre Barlow, put your trust in a woman who cares. Deirdre Barlow has lived in the area... And if you shop in the precinct at all, you'll know that we definitely need a crossing on Rosalind Ooh, Street. Yeah. Anyway, Mrs. Martin, I'll uh, I'll put you down as a definite then. Oh yes. Right. Thanks. Bye for now. Ta oh, another definite. So she says. We've got company. Oh, small world, small ward as well. Mm. Wonder what sort of response he's getting. Tell you, it's not my idea of having a good time on a bank holiday. Now you know what I said, love. Oh. For better, for worse. <laughs> Good morning, love. Mrs. Denton, isn't it? Alf Roberts, your local councillor. I've just come to see if you're going to give me a vote again. You've been round once, not ten minutes since. No, that wasn't me, love. That was somebody else. So accept no substitutes, love. That's what I always say, you know. Uh, Whatever you want, love, yeah, the answer is yes. Oh, I want you to vote for my husband, uh, give him your support, like. Give you my support, love, any time you want. Oh, get away with it. I know your sort. I'll talk till the action starts. <laughs> well, not me, love. But you like a bit of print. Oh, no. I've been representing you for the oh. past 20 years. I think you know my record. Do you? Hiya, Terry. Hiya, mate. What do you want to come dragging me out of bed for? Oh, you could have stayed in your pit for me, sunshine. It's the brains of the family I come to see. I think he means you. Well, of course I do. I mean, if your brains were made out of satin, there wouldn't be enough material to make a butterfly a pair of knickers, would there? Told you I had great admiration for me. I've just been telling Linda how I don't plan to be on the knocker for the rest of my life. Or even this time next year. Oh, I've got, uh, ambitions. Yeah. That always was your trouble. Fear of ambition wouldn't do you any harm, Pete. Dead right. Only today's our day off, isn't it? What have you got in mind? Well, I fancy making a day of it somehow or other. I tell you what. 
How do you fancy fish and chips for your dinner? Because if you do, I know this great chippy on the front of Blackpool. Oh, yeah. I've not been to Blackpool for donkey's years. Talking of which, you can give rides on the beach, we'll make some money. And, uh, can bring your bucket in Spain. Now, come on, chop, chop. It's only an hour in the van. Are you serious? Well, why not? I mean, sea air, bags of cockles, rides on the ghost train. I mean, how about it? I'd love it. We've not had a day out since the car went. Don't rake that up. I'm not raking anything up. Well, don't just stand there. Come on, hustle round, and I'll call at our house on the way, and I'll change me kecks. With me little stick. Much for vacuuming around, Jane. Don't mention it. It's not my fault, is it? Hey, you're at the parties this one, eh? Don't <laughs> talk like that when Alfred Roberts is about me. Uh, I'll tell you what, <laughs> it's been only just about fixed. I've done myself a mischief. <laughs> hey, you can't be in that case. You're gonna have to swap this for two singles. Oh, it's okay, you laughing, I tell you. <laughs> Oh, you should have left them, Mrs. O. I would have fixed them oh, up for you. all right. They all love their shebedding. Oh, thanks. This bed's a present off Mrs. O. Being a housewarming, isn't that nice? Oh, oh yeah. Oh. oh, it's been a good bed, as that? Well, it still is. I mean, you've been sleeping on it, so you know. Oh, I certainly do. Well, uh, I'm going to get the headboard before I get too embarrassed. Hey, <laughs> Kev, don't forget to bend your knees when you pick it up, will you? <laughs> do you know, it's bigger than I imagined. Of course, they always do look bigger till you get your furniture in. Mm. Yeah, well, such as it is, we've got a chest of drawers, we've got a little table and some mm. chairs, oh, and a little settee. Mm. Terry and Curly are going to fetch him for us this afternoon. Mm. Lynch used to live here at one time, you know. Oh, I bet this room could tell some tales. <laughs> there was her in one bedroom and her landlord, Alf Roberts, in another. What do you mean? Oh, I'm saying nothing. Uh, here you go. Oh, hey, up. One bed. All it needs now is putting it together. Oh, don't do it in here, Kev. Do it in the bedroom, eh? Oh, wait, your bedroom now. Could be just the other side of the wall to mine. You'll only be the width of a couple of bricks away. Oh, did you hear that, Kevin? <laughs> Mrs. Ogden will be just the other side of our bedroom wall. Yeah, so if you want anything, you'll only have to knock. <laughs> <clears throat> oh, mind of falling. Ah, Mr. Rogers, isn't it? I'm Deirdre Barlow, your independent candidate in the council elections. Never heard of you. Well, you should have had one of my leaflets. Never read that sort of rubbish. It goes straight on the fire. Perhaps that's because in the past you've been given promises that haven't been kept. Well, I think we need new blood on the council. That's why I'm standing in this election. Married, are you? Kid is, eh? Yes, I've got a little girl. Well, you should be at home looking after her. That's a full-time job for a mother, is that? Oh. Not meddling in politics. I think that's a bit of an old-fashioned view. What's the matter? There's been an accident. A little boy knocked down. He was running across Rosamond Street. Oh, no! Where were his mother? Eh? What are you two having? I'm getting these. Uh, no, you're not. I am. See, be told. This is on account of you moving into your new house. Uh, light out for me, please, and uh, whatever Kevin and Sally are having. Yeah, I'll have a pint, please. Just the mind tonic, please. Bye, heck, you'll rarely recognise you. What happened to the Ilder Ogden that were mopping this floor this morning? Well, there's no law that says a person can't look chick when she goes out for a drink. Not that I'm aware of. Well, granted, but what's the all in here, though? Kevin, I'm going to sit over there. Will you bring the drinks up? <laughs> <laughs> it's me, Uncle Tom. She's all dolled up for. He's coming over this afternoon to take her on an outing. Yeah, yeah all right. But what's she uh, simpering and coy for? She should be shy and blushing. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> hey, aren't you uh, moving into Corner Shop Flat soon? Yes, yes, afternoon. Oh, best of luck, kid. That takes me back. I lived up there for a year or two. Word of advice, watch out, Robert. What do you mean? You mean you had some trouble with him? Oh, not like you're thinking, unfortunately, no. I mean, with you living over at Job, he'll take advantage. You'll have you working all hours. He won't, you know. Anyway, I don't mind living over at Job. Quite right, I do it myself. Beats living over at Brook. <laughs> <laughs> right. On your own today? Unfortunately, yes. 
You see, Mavis's yeah. gentleman friend isn't allowed to play out on bank holidays, is he, love? Rita, it's got these uh, commitments, unfortunately. You can say that again. As for Alan, well, he's convinced the general public are going to be desperate for videos today, so he's opened shop and me and Mavis have left him to get on with it. Quite right. <laughs> Rita, I wish you wouldn't do that. What? Well, you know very well what about Derek. We should be more discreet. There's no point, Mavis. Everybody around here knows about you and Derek. They all know he's married. They don't, do they? Oh, whatever must they think? They think you've got a married boyfriend. Not exactly unique, you. Well, it's not like that. I mean, well, they, they mustn't think that. I mean, Derek and me, we're just friends. Well, I wouldn't tell anybody around here that, whatever you do. I mean, if they think you and Derek are just pen pals, well, you would get some funny loose. Oh, you have to reduce everything to an animal level. Oh, we used to love a jaunt out on a bank holiday, no, my Bert. When our brain worked, we always went off somewhere. Happy days, eh? Yeah. But it was different for me, you know, with our Jack. It was a dread going on a charity trip with our Jack. He was vanishing to the nearest pub. <laughs> he would always last back to charity. Yeah, me and Arthur, would be sat there getting dirty looks from all and sundry. Then he'd turn up, Kay lied. He was fast driving to pull up. Out there as well. Hiya, Lord. All right, curly lad. Ready then? Hang on a minute, Kev. Uh, is Teddy not with you? Only I called at your house and there's no one there. Well, well he's in Blackpool. I thought you'd have been with him. Blackpool? Yeah. Oh, he's never taken the van, has he? Well, as far as I know, yeah. Oh, well. Flaming Teddy Duckworth. Hey, oh, you're... begging your pardon, Mrs. Duckworth. He's only shot off to Blackpool with the van, hasn't he? Oh. Well, we need the van for moving the stuff. Yeah, well, we can't move into our flat. Yes, exactly. Oh. Come and have some lunch. I don't want anything, Ken. I'm that upset about that little lad. All the same, you ought to eat something. You've been on the go all morning. I knew that street was dangerous. Didn't I say to you, somebody's going to get knocked over? Didn't just say it to me, you said it to all the voters in your election address. I quote, we need a crossing on Rosamond Street before a child gets killed. It was very perceptive of yeah, you. It doesn't make me feel any better being proved right. Well, I don't say it should make you feel any better, but I do say it improves your chances in this election. Ken! What? That's a horrible thing to say. It's cold-blooded. No, I don't think so. In my opinion, you should turn this little lad's accident to your advantage. Ken, I can't do that. That's horrible. I can't use people's grief in that way. Well, in that case, you've got to ask yourself if you're serious about getting involved in public life. Listen, that little lad is in hospital. He, he might be crippled for life. He might die. Yes, so it proves that you're right about that road being dangerous and needing a crossing. So hammer that issue for all it's worth. Use it to win this election. So if you do, you can do something about it, for God's sake. You'd be in a position to take effective action. You could stop it happening to some other poor little kid. Look, love. It's not good enough just feeling sorry for people. What counts is doing something about it. You sure you don't want something a bit stronger, Emily? Shakes you up an excellent life. No, no thanks, Mr. Ford. Did you actually see it happen? No, I, I saw the ambulance arrive and then put the little boy inside. Was he badly hurt? Well, I don't know, but a man who saw it said there was an awful thump when the car hit him. This, um... A little boy, uh, how old would you say he'd be? Oh, about nine or ten, I should say. <laughs> What's that for? I know what you're thinking. Look, it's not my flaming fault, is it? I can't help it if Teddy forgot what I told him, can I? Well, that's if you told him. I told him last thing last night. I said tomorrow we're moving Sally and Kevin's stuff. Look, we'll nip round first thing in the morning and get your furniture. The woman we're buying it off, she might not be there tomorrow morning, Curly. She'd stayed in all afternoon so we could go and get it. Oh, I'm so, I'd set me heart on moving in today. Well, we can still move in, love. I've got a bed. You can't move into a new home with just a bed for your furniture. Why not? Why not? Because you can't. That's why not. It doesn't look decent. Well, over here, Tom. Hello there. What's to do? So we are Sally. She's got a face on her as long as a gas man's Mac. Well, you know they were moving into the flat today. Aye. Well, they've been let down. 
They've got no transport. Is that all? Look, van's parked outside door. Oh, no. We're not spoiling your day out. I know Mrs Ogden's been looking forward to this outing. Oh, give over. We can go and get your stuff and still have an outing. It's only over Whitefield Roadway. It wouldn't take long, would it? Would it, Eck? Hey, come on, you lads. Don't sit there like one of Lewis's. Let's get a crack and we'll get it ourselves. You know, Alf, there's only you would be open 3.30 on a bank holiday. I mean, it's shaking the shilling a bit, this, you know. It's not just the money, love. It's the customers. They expect me to be here. If somebody comes traipsing around for a pound of sugar and I'm closed, bang, that's another vote gone. Oh, oh to hell with their votes. Come on, let's get shook. Ah, go on, then. <coughs> I think I might have a walk down Napier Street, though. You know, do a bit more camping. Oh. It'll only take an hour. Don't expect me to come. You needn't worry about that, neither. It was wicked the way you went on this morning. There is a difference, you know, between asking a fellow for his vote and flirting with him. Oh, give over. I was only being pleasant. You what? You know, they seduced that old fellow in Blake Street, batting your eyes at him and giggling. He could have dropped dead any minute. I was hoping you wasn't, yeah. I. Anyway, these old age pensioners, they need a bit of fun at their age. Yeah, well, you're supposed to be getting a vote for me, not getting yourself put in his will. Oh. <laughs> hey, hey, where do you think you are off? Uh, up to Kevin and Sally's flat. Uh, side door, if you don't mind. Oh, I'm sorry. I should think you are. I know it's not a public convenience, you know. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. You'll rule the day you let them kids have the flat upstairs. Listen, she'll be an asset with that girl. She's as bright as a button, and she don't keep sniping at me neither. We should have left it for our girl. I know she doesn't want it now, with them stairs and struggling with the pram and that. But in a few years' time, she might be very grateful. That's your trouble, though, isn't it? I think you think more of this shot and scraping together one or two votes so you can stay on that blooming council than you do of your own family. Them stairs are murder. Oh, that's a lot then, is it? Yeah, that's it. We're not exactly over furnished, are we? Oh, well, you'll soon have it looking home, like. Get one or two pictures up and a few ornaments. <laughs> Oh, you could have had my ducks. Only there were my Aunt Aggies. Look nice on that wall. Oh, no. We couldn't take your ducks, Mrs Ogden. Oh, I'm sure my Aunt Aggie wouldn't mind. Oh, no, I couldn't take them. I'd feel guilty. No, no, you, uh, you hang on to them. We'll look for something similar. Oh, yeah, that's a good idea. I'll keep my eyes open for you. Hey, come on now, Hilda. Let's leave these young'uns to it. It's only half three. Day's young yet. Now, where do you fancy going? Well, I don't know as I fancy going anywhere now. Looks as if it's going to rain, any road. Oh, that's us, isn't it? We've spoiled your outing. No, no, you haven't. Listen, why don't you come next door, put your feet up and watch the sport on the telly, and I'll get the tea on. You've got the makings of a steak and kidney pie. Hey, that sounds great. Oh, she makes a great steak and kidney pie, does Mrs. Old Thick Cross Plenty, baby. Are ah, you going to miss my pies, aren't you, Kevin? Yeah. Still. So you'll soon get the hang of it, won't you, love? Well, I've been thinking about that, Kev, especially now I've got a full-time job. I think we should do a bit more sharing in our kitchen. Well, I don't know nothing about cooking. Oh, it's dead easy. I'll show you how cooker works. Nothing to it compared with them car engines you fiddle about with. <laughs> oh, God, your cooker. He's still with Terry in the van on his day out. Oh, well, we'll have to go to Chippy tonight, then. It's bank holiday. It's you up. Well, here, uh, I've got enough in to make a real big pie. You're very welcome. Oh, oh great. great. No, because... thanks a lot, sir, Mrs Ogden. But me and Kevin don't want to butt in on you two. We'll go to Rovers. Oh. Hey, listen, Hilda wouldn't have invited you if she didn't mean it. Oh, I know that, but me and Kevin, we've got to start playing fair with you two now, haven't we? I'm sure there's many a time we've interrupted a good snogging session. Oh, you have not the very idea. Hey, well, in that case, you can, you can do then, can't you? Hey, think on, Uncle Tom. If she goes too far, just run up them stairs and bang an hour. Oh, you see how Come on. See ya. I'll get it. You don't know me, and my name's Willis. I dare say you heard about that accident on Rosman Street this morning. Uh, yes, yes, we did. Well, it was my little boy that got knocked down. Oh, come in. Deirdre, this is Mrs Willis. I know, uh, I know, I heard. How is he? Well, he's got a broken leg and a lot of bruises, but he's going to be all right. Oh, thank God. He's going to be in hospital for a few days. I'm just on my way back to visit him now. Only, I thought I'd call, you see. I wanted to tell Mrs Barlow that I'll be voting for her and so will all my neighbours and all. Nelson Street we live. We've all said that Rosman Street's a death trap. It is. Well, I know you've been saying that. That's why we'll be voting for you. Because I, Gary, well, 
He could be dead. He was very lucky. Yes, love. Well, the sooner we get that cross. And my husband, he'll be telling all his mates at work. Oh, thanks very much. And I tell you, if I do get in, I shall be moving heaven and earth to get that cross in. Now, listen, would you like a cup of tea? Oh, no, I won't keep you. Anyway, I'm due back at the hospital. Well, I'm so glad he's going to be all right. Look, um, would you mind if Deirdre visited him? You'd like to do that, wouldn't you? Oh, yes, yes, I would. I'd take him some comics. Oh, well, that'd be very nice of you. Anyway, I'll let you get on. Anyway, good luck. Oh, thanks very much. Okay. Oh. Bye. Bye. Oh. Now, you don't mind me volunteering for hospital visiting? Oh, no, of course I don't. Good, because I'm going to. I'm going to be there with a camera. I'm going to splash this all over the recorder. I think this is going to do you a lot of good. Well, I do believe. I hope you're right. Starving. What for? She got a week, glow. Crisps, peanuts, scratchings. I mean proper food, not those toenail clippings. Oh, I'm sorry, Kev. Betty's off, you see. Anyway, there's no call for food in here. Of course there's a call for him. Crying out for him. Starving. Oh, blimey. No oh, food. Didn't you do a buying in this morning, so? Yeah, only basics, though. Potatoes, butter, bread, that kind of thing. Nothing to make sandwiches, though. Hey, if we'd had our cocoa, we could have had chip butter. Oh, don't talk to me, woman. That Chinese in the precinct might be open. Or that burger place in town, that'll definitely be open. Yeah, but that's miles away, Curly. We've got no transport, and it's raining. Hey, can't you get some out of those freezer? Oh, I can't. He hasn't even given me a set of keys yet. That reminds me, Kev, we're going to need a fridge. Oh, great. I'm starving. Now she's telling me I'm going to be skimp. Well, me and Terry will get you a cheap fridge. You can't even get us a cooker. Wait till I see Terry Duckworth. Innkeeper, get me a pint quick. It's an emergency. I'm stone cold sober because I've been driving. Which is more than I can say for these two drunkards. It's like you got your okay, wish after all, eh? Terry Duckworth, where have you been with my gas cooker? Hey, It's in the back of your van while you've been frolicking around Blackpool. And if you've got sand in it, you're in dead trouble. You were supposed to help us move into our flat this afternoon. Where are you, Terry? Come to think of it, yeah, I only forgot, didn't I? <laughs> we had a great day out, though. I'm sorry, love, if we'd have known. Look, it's not an hanging offence, is it? Look, it's only a few sticks of furniture, it's no problem. Look, just let us have this pint first, will you? Uh, Gloria, drinks all round for these lovely people. Well, at least we'll get a bit of supper. You said you got potatoes. You can have chips. No, we can't. You'll have to buy me a chip pan first. <laughs> Right, we'll have a quick one in the rovers, then get round to your girl. Yeah, okay. okay. What's that? Right, you carry your end. Oh, okay. How many are there of them? It's a chip can, it's a single man's job. Hey, Linda, I'm worried about your husband. You are doing stuff for mischief. I don't suppose I know this. Hey, I heard that. I told you, didn't I? You'll rule the day, you let that slap. I'm a chip for my kingdom for a chip for us. Is Lord Chipmunk like his breakfast served on the patio? No, no, no. Get the maid to serve it out in the dining room, please. <laughs> well, it's not quite Webster's Towers, but hey, it's a mansion to me all the same. He wants a mansion, any old little titsy thing like you. Loser than a dozen rooms. Hey, it's clean that have put me off. Yeah, when we're rich, we'd have people to do all the mucky jobs. Oh, I don't believe it. Oh, I don't know. I won't mind a nice little French maid hanging round the place. Anybody else? Oh, I thought we'd left all that behind. Yeah, there we are. Plenty of time for privacy. Mm, don't count on it. I should probably bore a spy all through the wall and bug the bed. <laughs> Oh, <laughs> just uh, one or two bits and bobs you left in the airing cupboard. I thought you might need them. Well, not desperately, Mrs Ogden. I've got a spare pair of knickers. Well, uh, fancy a cup of tea? Uh, oh, uh, no, no, thanks, Chuck. I've got to get off to the Rovers. And besides, you don't want me interrupting your very first breakfast on your own. <laughs> Rubbish! Sit yourself down. So, go and fill the teapot up and uh, find Mrs Ogden a cup. Anyway. She'll come round, mate. I hope so. Anyway, I'm here. Well, quite right, sunshine. You let her know who's wearing the trousers. It's not so much that, I mean. She's not the domineering type, not Linda. We're a team, you know what I mean? So how come she's giving you all this aggro? I suppose she reckons I could do better. Hope you got them coffee sugared this time. 
They don't like the service. Get them yourselves. Did you hear that? His missus don't like him running around with us. Thinks we're a load of layabout. She got nothing against you. Well, apart from the fact that we shared a couple of good times. Some great laughs. Swipe booze up. Great birds. Perhaps that's what she's worried about. Frightened we'll get you on the right track again. Touch the old green-eyed monster. Nah. She just wants me to do something with her future. Well, this has got a future on it. Today we're door-to-door -door selling. But tomorrow we'll open our own hypermarket. Well, next year. From little acorns, right? I don't know if I'm any good at it yet. Look, of course you are. If Curly can do it, anybody can. Right, Phil? I don't think that's particularly funny, Terry. Independent candidate Deirdre Barlow's prophecy came tragically true this week when Gary Willis, aged nine, of Nelson Street and a pupil at Bessie Street Primary School was knocked down and seriously injured in Rosamond Street. During a recent radio interview, Mrs Barlow stated that if she were elected, she would campaign fiercely for blah, 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 a pelican crossing at that particular black spot being high on the list. Well, the photo doesn't do her justice. Can you get a more flattering one? Mm -hmm. I bet Alf will have something to say about this. It's a perfectly valid news item, Bert. Oh, come on, Ken. If one of the other candidates had been rooting for this pelican and a kid had got hurt, you'd have printed it just the same? Of course. Oh, of course. Only it would have got itself buried in a weeny column on the back page. Am I right? Editor's privilege, Bert. Yeah. Well, he's learning, so I'll give him that. But I'm not sure I altogether approve. I mean, for one thing, the boy wasn't seriously hurt. He broke his leg. Well, that's serious enough if you're a nine-year-old boy went to ride around on your BMX. Did you hear that, Mark? Yes, it's boring. All politics is boring. Well, that's no attitude. It's up to us to take an interest if we want to get out done. Not that I reckon she'd be much cop anyway, even with her husband pushing her. That's not a roll of drums, that's me belly rumbling. You've not long since had a hot dog. He put me on a diet. It's true, you're worse than a wife, you. Not worse than my wife. Watches my cholesterol like an orc. Sometimes I'd sell me granny for a plate of bread and dripping. <laughs> you know, I'd sell her to get nutted. You won't catch no bird dictating what goes in my gob. She'll be looking after me. Her dad popped off early with his heart. Did he? Well, don't just sit there. Go and see what's on offer. Go and see yourself. I'm not your butler. No, oh, go on. My turn next, eh? Oh. Right, I must be off. I'm meeting Deirdre in Back Marriott Street at one. Okay. Certainly all go. Bye-bye. You don't look very happy, Norman. I'm brassed off to tell you the truth. I'm just a joke to them now, but a flaming slave. Oh, surely not. You're too sensitive at times, Norman. I must dash. If I'm not back by tea time, you manage to make yourself a bite to eat, well, won't you? Oh, well, yeah, Emily. Um, what time shall I pick you up tonight? Tonight? Yeah. Yes, it's the church choir. You know, they're putting on a performance for St. Stephen's Dry Rock. We said we'd go. Did we? I must have forgotten with all the activity. I'm sorry, Mavis, you'll have to excuse me, but we are in the thick of an election. Busy, 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 rush, rush, rush. It's just like the white rabbit these days. No time for anybody. They're all the same. They're just interested in their own stupid lives, the stupid things they did in the army. They don't want to know about you. Quite. The army? Them two over there, Tweedledee and Tweedledum. Just because they once wore a uniform, they think that makes them men, while the rest of us are just silly kids. So, well, I meet some women who make me feel like that. Not like a silly kid, I don't mean, but, well, inadequate. Oh, I don't feel inadequate. I mean, shooting guns and crawling around with twigs in your right, it doesn't make you a better person, does it? It doesn't teach you about books, about ideas, about the power of philosophical thought. You would try telling girls that. Yeah, well, it's the same for us. I mean, most men seem to prefer long-legged blondes with a big, you know... Bust. A bosom to anyone with an artistic sensitivity. Oh, well, that suits them two to a T. I mean, women think they're macho. While me, they think I'm just a wimp. Oh, well, you're not. You're by far the more superior person. You've got intellectual quality, Norman. And so have you, Mavis. Those pastry girls, well, they can't hold a candle. Thank you, Norman. The trouble is... I, I know, I know. We may be superior, but we don't feel superior, do we? No, no. we don't. Well, I don't know what she wants to be bothered for. She'd be far better occupied stopping at home and having a little brother or sister for Tracy. You tell her that, Hilda. Dinner's been ready for 20 minutes. Yeah, I know. I'm just waiting for Sally to come down. 
I'll give it a shout. Sally! Oh, shh! I wouldn't care, but I had to wheel the pram down, disturbing her just when she was settling off. You told me to have it on the table, one o'clock prompt. Ah, well, I'm seeing Henry at half past oh. it. Uh, I'm sorry, Elder, would you now? Uh, 3.26, look, please. How long is Madame supposed to have for a lunch, anyway? Well, it's just with her Uncle Tom bringing some stuff around, you know. Oh, is Tom up with that? Oh, well, I'll just nip up, then. Well, he'd think I'm rude if he knows I was here and didn't even yeah. say hello. <laughs> Hey, Hilda, I'd be glad if you'd use the side door. I warned you, didn't I? Yeah, well, I've more on my mind than that. Have you seen this little item? Oh, yeah, I glanced at it in the cabin. It's a bit off. A bit it? off? It's blatant, blooming nepotism. Talk about unfair tactics. Well, isn't it against the law or something? I mean, using newspaper in for downright propaganda. Listen, half the editors in the land would be in jail if it was. They've all got their own political stances, but at least they don't use their influence to promote their own flaming wives. Right, boss, me body's here. Don't just stand there. Your lunch will be going cold. Tell him, Audrey. Hey, I remember our first little place. Me and Stan's. Bed sitter half the size of this it were, but I wouldn't have swapped it for Buckingham Palace. Me and Margaret started off in married quarters. Young as these two we were then. Hey, I bet you fetched them round, am I right? I did. I thought, well, you know, there's not like a couple of pot plants to make a place look lived in. Bless them. You know, they'll be as happy as the day is long, here. Yeah? Well, I hope they were happy at my place. Oh, I'm sure they were, love. But, I mean, there's no like being on your own, is there? I mean, take you, for instance. I'll bet you're glad to have your place back to yourself again. Oh, I am, yeah, yeah. Oh, well, it's a treat to be able to fall asleep in front of the telly and not worry about whether you sat there snoring with your mouth wide open. <laughs> you do now to sort. My Stan used to. I didn't mind, though. He was never what you might call a great talker, but... Well, it was enough just having him there. When he went, you know, the house seemed huge. Huge and empty. Then I had Henry stopping with me for a short time. I told you about Henry, All didn't right. I? Mm. Then I was on my own again until Kevin came. Then Sally. Oh, and then it was just like having my own family around me all over again. Our Trevor and Irma. I know, love. I know. But, you know, there's no like having a bit of peace and quiet at our time of life. I shall miss them, though, Tom. Of course you will, love. But, you know, they're only next door. And don't forget, any time you want a bit of mature company, well, it's ours to hand, you know that. Oh, I do, yeah, yeah. And it's very convenient with him being just across the road. Him? Him who? Percy Sugden. Hey, Hilda Ogden, you know what you are? You're a flirt. <laughs> what are you? <laughs> I'll tell you one person who's going to benefit from all this, Emily, even if nobody else is, me flipping caropodist. <laughs> Hi. I, uh, I take it I can still count on you, lady. Oh, not that flaming election spiel again. Look, I'm telling you straight. First one to cut tax gets my vote. That's <laughs> good, <laughs> you bald pot, not council. Oh. Well, rates then. Hey, if you get in, will you cut us my rates like? <laughs> You're talking daft. She's got no influence. So, well, why should bother it then? Get a picture in her old man's paper. <laughs> because I believe I can change things. Now, what we need right now is a much more dynamic approach. Oh, so if you can do better, Miss Dynamo, tell us what you can do for our Franklin. Who's Franklin? My brother. We've got him, his wife and his three kids all living with us. Is he on the housing list? Don't make me laugh. He's been on it for young. All they can offer him is the top floor of a tower block. You try living on the 14th hey. floor with two toddlers and a six-month-old kid. Hey. And it's all this woman that has to take brunt. Yes. 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 No, I, I wouldn't no. care. There's this girl lives down the road. She's a right scrubber and all. She gets herself pregnant. A mum kicks her out. And bingo. Next thing, she's living in a nice little council flat overlooking St Mary's Park. Oh, hang on, oh, hang on. Look, yeah. the council does have to give priority to homeless families. Let's get it right. Oh, and what about us? Nine of us all squashed into one little house. Yeah. There's no flipping joke. Yeah, yeah. I agree. Hey. I agree. Overcrowding is rotten, but at least it's better than not having a roof over your head. Oh. Oh. I'm sorry, Al, but I don't think that's good enough. You like it's it? a typically complacent attitude. Count your blessings and don't rock the boats. Yeah, I suppose you think you're going to walk in and say, let's build a few thousand more council houses. And everyone going to say, what a good idea. Why didn't we think of that? There's no need for sarcasm, Al. Oh, no. Look, we would all like more low-cost housing. But the cutbacks are a fact of life. I know the facts of life, councillor. And I also know that if you feel strongly enough, you can usually find a way of getting something done. Brave yeah, talk, Mrs yeah. Barlow. So that's your platform, is it? You're going to promise them the moon, get yourself elected, and suddenly Weatherfield North is going to become utopia. I don't make promises I can't keep. But one promise I can keep is that I'll listen to people's problems and I'll take them seriously. 
And if there's anything that can humanly be done to improve things, I'll damn well see it gets done. Well done, you know him. Well done, well done, you know him. Best be getting back. You okay? Yeah, I'm fine. Oh, you were terrific. The way you kept your cool when he was being so flipping patronising. Oh, I'd have hit him once. Oh, it, it's just his way. I'm used to it. Well, I thought you handled it beautifully. I'm proud of you. See you later, champ. Right. Bye. Bye. Bye-bye. Well, you certainly won the women over. Even that awkward Shirley gave you a grudging mm -hmm. clap at the end. Oh, good. I can do without all the aggro, though. Mm. Well, from what I've seen of politics, today was just kid stuff. Yeah, I'm aware of that, but this is different. I'm just not cut out for street slanging matches with somebody I know and like. Oh, come on, Deirdre. You made a tougher stuff than that. Anyway, Alf's an old war horse. He knows it's part of the game. Easy <laughs> Rower Rita said, then Deirdre clunk you over your head with her handbag. I said no such thing, lady. I wasn't even there. Don't kids show you up. Hey, the only man in a mob of hostile women. Who knows what they might have done to you? Hey, I bet you wish they had, don't you? <laughs> Freaky. Jenny. <laughs> have you no control over her gob? Not a lot, no. It's not a thing to make daft jokes about, you know. My husband acquitted himself very well as it so happens. Well, how would you know you weren't there as far as I am? No, ladies, ladies, it wasn't the world everywhere fighting. It was just a common old garden electoral dispute. They happen all the time. Well, not when I'm there, they don't. You know, the first time anything exciting happens in this street, and I'm at the library advising Julius Boring Caesar. Oh, I'm very sorry. Next time I'll sell tickets in advance. Oh, come on, and give us hand with these boxes. <laughs> See ya. Mm. Bye. 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 Oh, worry, love. I'm sure you give as good as you got. Ah, uh, dear, it's like all the others, you know. They come in wet behind their ears. They think they look going work miracles. They soon learn, though. Look! Folks can tell the difference between an amateur and a pro, don't you fret? I'm sure those women today soon spotted which one of them was talking through her hat. <laughs> I've got four hundred years. Oh. Right, now, don't be making a noise. You don't want the neighbours to be upset, do you? I don't see why we have to call them. Yeah. 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 Dropping the booze, that's why. You're a bit too many now. What a stay. Well, I'm out of guests to be with you. Just leave it alone, darling. It's just a, a couple of bevies too many. It's not an anger offence. Don't but... dial in me, Terry. I had you down for a bad influence from the word go. Well, what do you think I did? Held his nose and pulled Dale down his gullet? He's a big lad now, you know. It's not Terry's fault. I just fancied tying one on, that's all. A bloke's entitled to break free every once in a while. It's a love lot more than once in a while since you took up with him again. A good lad is Terry. He's the best mate in the world. Oh, yeah, with mates like him, who needs enemies? Oh, that's right. Blame me if it makes you feel any happier. I'll tell you what would make me feel happier. If you just sling your hook and take yourself out of our lives altogether. That's fine by me, sweetheart. Only first, I suggest you help me get your husband up the stairs. Come on, mate. Hello, young lovers, wherever you are. Give all me a daft bat. Tom just took me out for a bite of supper, that's all. Take no notice, Hilda. She's only jealous. I admit it, I am. What's she got that I've not got, Thomas? Oh, watch your petals. She's after your cauliflowers. I'm not. You know I'm after him. Who needs toy boys? Older men have got so much more to offer a girl. Am I right, Hilda? We could always go to the flying horse, if you like. No, I don't like. I like it here. Now, can I have a pint of your best bitter and a port and lemon, please? Now, are you feeling better now, Elder Love? Have you got all your blues? Oh, yeah. Thanks to you. Yeah, I know. Hi, <laughs> I uh, talk about Paisley, something with Paul. Right, what's everyone having? I'll get these. I spoke first. As husband of the future councillor for Weatherfield North, I claim priority. Can't argue with that. On condition, I'll get the next one. Can I have a martini and lemonade, please, love? Yeah, same. Whiskey and water, please. Well, by the way, uh, had a chance to say well done. Well done. Well, uh, giving half a paste in the day. It was worth having my girls back ten minutes late. I won't even duck their place. It wasn't funny, Mike. I didn't say it was funny. Very serious business politics, even local politics. Uh, 
Gloria's bringing him over. Oh. Well, I think she's doing very well. Just needs to grow a thicker skin, that's oh, all. Oh, I think you'd be better at this sort of thing than I am. Oh, thanks for the compliment. No, I don't mean you've got a thick skin. I just mean, well, you're more assertive than I am. Listen, love, when shove turns to push, you can stick up for yourself. You demonstrated that this morning. Oh, she's so taking on the stride once a bandwagon gets rolling. Let's face it, that bit in the recorder won't do you any harm. Nice one, Ken. Thanks. Now, it's funny that, uh, well, I, I remember once my wife getting her knuckles wrapped for uh, manipulating the press for her own ends. There's absolutely no parallel with what Susan did. That was a total distortion of the fact. Listen, I thought we'd come here to discuss travel arrangements on the day. There you go. Oh, thank you. Okay. Gloria. Cheers, Laurie. Thank you. Oh, uh, Emily drew up a list of the likely prospects for the carpool, starting with our own and yours, uh -huh. I hope. Oh, count me in, too. Nothing like a chauffeur-driven jag to get them the punters out the road, is it? Chauffeur-driven? At your service, ma'am. All right, well, uh, put you down for a couple of hours in the evening. A couple of hours, nothing. Put me down for all day. No half measures, eh? No, oh, right, well, uh, thanks. No problem. Right, then. Here is to a resounding victory. <laughs> to victory. Victory. Yes, love. Thanks Good luck. Very much. Has your teddy been in, Mrs. Duckworth? Well, no, not since the Rene this dinner time, we home. I've been sat in that house like a lemon for over an hour waiting for him. Oh, well, it takes after his dad. No sense of time, bless him. He's probably out boozing with his pile. He forgets I exist these days unless he wants something doing. Right then. Better be off. Thanks. For helping get him into bed. Yeah, it would have been a bit tricky on you, Todd, wouldn't it? Wouldn't be the first time I've had to do it. it. Happens often then. More often than I like. Yeah. Well, he always was a bit fond of his sorceress, Pete. But so are we all. Some can take it. He can't. It's a shame. Because he's a good bloke. Yeah, he is. Look, uh, would you like a cup of coffee or something? Yeah, if it's not going to be too much trouble. Won't be a minute. I, um, I knew he was a bit too fond of the booze when we got married. Trouble is, when you love somebody, you don't let anything stand in your way. Mostly, he tries very hard. Until somebody like you comes along. Pete's trouble is, he loves being one of the boys. Look, I wasn't responsible for the state he was in tonight. He was well tanked up when we met. Yeah, I realise that. He's not needed leading astray since he quit the army. He's been quite capable of doing it on his own. He regrets it, you mean? At least there he had a place in the scheme of things. It's such a waste. When he's sober, he's the nicest guy in the world. But he's not the most confident. I suppose the drink gives him that temporarily. But he's got you. Yeah, well... Perhaps he resents that too. But I'm stronger than he is. But you stuck with it all this time. He's my husband. And I still think he can make something of himself. We can work this through together. I hope you can. Yeah, well, uh, we can't. As long as he hangs around with you, can we? What Pete needs is discipline, a proper job, not one where he can nip into the pub whenever he feels like it. You didn't seem to stop him when he was in the army, did it? I've got to try, haven't I? I maybe if you can find something that's really a challenge. Ah, oh, what's the use of talking to you? All your type's interested in is easy money and easy sex. Is that a fact? I've met plenty like you. Dead superficial, just wanting to zip along in the fast lane. You know, in a way, I almost envy you that. At least you don't get hurt. You make a lot of assumptions. Yeah, well, the coffee's... Of course right. I want the good things in life. I don't see nothing wrong with that. But don't you dare stand there and tell me I ain't got feelings. That I damn well don't get hurt. What happened then? Some girl actually rejected your manly charms. Yeah. Want to get it straight. Your proposal of marriage, you rejected. You 
were in love with her. Yeah. Surprising, isn't it? Even superficial fly-by nights like me can fall in love. Not to marry her. Not to be with her. Be with her and me, me kid. You've got a child. I've got a son. Be one now. Never seen him. Don't even know his name. Spilt milk, innit? Life goes on. Only sometimes it can be bloody painful. That kettle will be bold, dry. Don't bother. Better be going. Curly's gonna be waiting for me. Yeah. Have a good turnout. Well, there's been quite a song and dance about it, haven't there? Deirdre Barlow waving a banner. Well, that's democracy, isn't it, eh? Women, cranks, bits of kids, they've all got the right to this, eh? Oh, just say now to fellas, oddballs, caretakers who wear ratting caps. Hey, you can't park there. All right, Percy, I'm just waiting while Rita votes. I'm sorry, I can't make any exceptions. Not even for residents. This access must be kept clear. But there's no other space. Happen, but rules are rules. Well, what rules are these? The rule that says nothing must impede or infringe the democratic right of the electorate to vote. And that's the rule I'm here to enforce without fear or favour. Well, bully for you. Apart from that, I do have the power to order no parking on council property as and when I see the need. Oh, very democratic, yes. I'll have no lip from you. I fought for democracy, did you? You! Does the process of democracy mean now to you people? Shift that car before you get shot. Morning. Hello. Come in. Pete, all set, is he? He's upstairs. Pete, the bus is here. Come on, wakey, wakey, sky bag, get fell in there. Ooh, what a charge, am I, sir? Sit down. Sir. Curly not with you? No, he's had to go to the warehouse to pick up some goods. Uh, we arranged to meet up at Jim's cat. Like it sweet? Yeah, just a spoonful. Or, uh, better still, stir it with your little finger. That the, uh, chat you give him, is it? All these housewives? Well, uh, roughly speaking, I do sometimes get more inspired, but, uh, well, it breaks the ice. Oh, I bet it has them buckling at the knees. You're a puzzle, do you know that? Am I? I thought we broke the ice the other night when I brought Pete home. Did I read you wrong or what? My husband had a skinful. You fetched him home. I was grateful. Right, Sergeant Major. That's me belt blank hold. Ready to move when you are. Right, uh, well, we'll uh, be going then. I'll see you dinner time, love. I promise. <sighs> Ta-da, then. And thanks for the tea. Ta-ra, Terry. is Bessie Street School. The polls close at 9 p.m. Be sure to vote. And when you vote, vote Labour. Now is the time to make your voice heard. We're back. Oh, oh, things right. on the canteen front. I could murder a couple. Oh. Coming up. Oh, I tell you what, there's getting the vote out. It plays havoc. Tonsils, feet, you name it. And you can't turn a corner without that flipping Labour thing. Oh, that no. loudspeaker blaring in your ear holes. 
good. All we need now is David Owen turning up for the alliance. Oh, hey, buck up. This is not the note we want. The day is yet young. No, we're trying. He's just compared to the big guns. Well, we've just got to get out there and do the business on a smile and a shoe shine. I can't smile anymore. I feel as I'm going daft with smiling. Yeah, well, it may sound sexist, but that smile of yours is a definite asset. Yeah, well, it feels as if it's pasted on. <laughs> Oh, thanks, love. Ta. You coming out canvassing with us then, Trace? I may heck, I've got homework. They close school and flipping well give us homework. And I should have had netball today. Oh, oh, thank you. Mm, that coffee smells nice. Will you get Auntie Emily a cup, love? Blooming servant, Anna. Right, Emily, what's the news? Oh, well, just a quick report. I've been on picket, as you might say, outside the community centre anteroom since the polling station opened. So far, the turnout's around 15%. I'd say we're doing fairly well, but there's still a lot of potential support we need to contact. Yes, OK, good work. Right, could you give uh, Deirdre and Susan a rough list? Yes, uh, that is a list of the people who haven't voted yet. Oh, God. Oh, there's certainly a lot to go on. Uh, yeah, well, it's bound to be at this stage, so come on. Come on, let's get mobile. There's no time to waste. Blimey, with you behind him, even Neil Kinnock might stand a chance. <laughs> How's it going, Henry? Well, it's a bit hard to tell this early, isn't it? Any road, you shouldn't be hanging around here. Yeah, well, I just nipped in. Anyway, I thought you'd be outside the anteroom checking the roll. Well, there's not much you're doing at the moment. I just nipped out for a natter. Mm, I see. Hey, they're a bit previous, aren't they? Set up for the count already. I reckon that with Percy, is it panicking? <laughs> Excuse me, gentlemen. Now, I'm not a bloke that uh, likes being official, but this is a restricted area, especially where candidates are concerned. Sorry, Mr. Sugden. Just inspecting the final battlefield, as you might call it. Mm, sensing victory, are you? Like Montini's Jeep before El Alamein? Ah, I happen. I'm undefeated up to press, you know. Aye, so we're Rommel. They'll love you. I must admit that in the past I have always tended to take the independent line. Hey, last of the pioneers, this girl. <laughs> well, in my opinion, it's the person rather than the policy. Oh, that's dangerous thinking, that is, Mavis. I mean, that's how these Hollywood stars get elected. We've already had Ronald Reagan, who's next? Champion? The Wonder Horse? Well, <laughs> I don't care. I mean, I just think it's what the particular candidate has to offer. Oh, I get you. I'm not the only one who's hanging on for the bribes and the backhanders. Well, I must say, in this case, I find it very difficult. I mean, my loyalties are painfully divided. But does that hurt? I mean, is it like gongs? <laughs> I just think that perhaps the only answer is abstention. Do you mind? Less of those dirty words. No, Mavis has a point. Can Alf cling on to his old faith? Oh. Or does the answer lie, lie in, in the, the soil? soil. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Morning, lads. Keeping busy. Haven't you noticed? We're both in shorter. It's all the legwork. Actually, Alec, we were just about to knock on your office door, see if you knew the top rate of tax these days. Oh, yes. Big earners, eh? You'll not be interested in a spot of furniture removing, then. Depends how much, doesn't it? Just the one item. A jukebox. Collect at this address, drop off at that one. Oh, they're all dives, these, mate. When I said how much, Alex, what I meant was the readies. It's only a ten-minute job. We'll need fifteen notes. I was thinking of ten myself. Yeah, but there's three of us. It only needs two. Oh, uh, well, jukeboxes, these dens of iniquity. I reckon it's two for the lifting and a heavy's mandatory. Are you blinding me with science or what? These big words don't half trip off your tongue, so. What he's telling you, Alex, is 15 notes or no deal. <clears throat> well, you twisted me arm. But then, what's a fiver between thieves, eh? Just do us a favour, lads. Next time you want to squeeze something, try a lemon. And as soon as you can, and don't drop the flaming thing, they cost money. You were a bit quick cutting Pete in, weren't you? Well, like you say, he's a mate, and on reflection, ice broken and all that, a good one. So you have to be straight with him, don't you? That's the code. Oh, and, and by the way, I'm only saying this because I know you're dirty, mine. I'm not doing this because I fancy Linda. That marriage is as firm as a rock. You reckon? I do. You can see it in her eyes. There's no betrayal there. Well, I'm glad to hear it, because even respectable women are putty in your hands, aren't they? Hey, Come on, Casanova, let's go and get Pete out of his love nest. Hey, aren't you going to vote first? Me? I'm a communist. Besides which, I haven't made my first million yet. Oh, very good. Look, Pete, you don't have to stop in every night. It's just that... 
Well, things have been moving pretty fast lately. New faces, new opportunities, which is exciting, but we don't want to get taken over. I mean, we did have plans of our own. But it's nice to have a social life, isn't it? OK, it's a pity the lads aren't wed. Why is that a pity? I just thought perhaps, well, you felt a bit spur. Listen, if I do go for a pint with them tonight, you come on all. Get your glad rags on and knock their eyes out. That be Terry and Curly now. Regular as clockwork. They're more reliable than the milkman. Are we all right for tonight, then? Can I warn them you'll be there? All doled up. I suppose so. Right, Freeze, my squad. Uh, sorry to bust him up, but we've got a van full of gear outside there. Uh, and uh, Curly's got the whip out. Right, Mush. Let's get cracking. Operation Ale Money. Oh, you're out tonight, then, are you? You uh, finally got your pass stamped? Yeah, and Linda fancies a bevy and all. So I'll have me an escort. Is that right? That's right. Well, I'll see you tonight then. Maybe Sir Harley, 14 or Rosalind Street. AE 1634. Thank you. Oh, well, just wait. The cart's hardly started yet. Oh, come on, let's go back inside. I mean, I've got knitting to do. Come on, you know, enjoy it. Get your adrenaline going. Well, I've none left. It's been going full tilt for the past few months. Dad! Oh, hello. Hi. Oh, yeah. Have you been in yet? Ask me in an hour. An hour? God, I'll have no fingernails oh, left. Right, here we are. There's oh, everything, there I believe. Do we keep this? Oh, thank you. Evening, evening. Oh, evening, evening. Evening, evening. Oh, oh, hello, Kate. Nice to see you. Mrs. Barlow, uh, Susan. Hello. Nice to see you. Any figures out here, then? Well, I gather it's about average. Something between 40 and 50. Eh? 40 and 50? That can't be right. 40, 50 percent, Susan. Get on the ball. Well, it's just my nerves. <laughs> right, well, uh, I think I'll circulate, love, and try and find out what the expert view is. Oh, right. Excuse me. Sorry. How are you feeling as we approach the moment of truth? Numb, Emily. Numb. Which, uh, which is my pile? Um, well, you, you don't seem to have much of a pile. Just yet. <laughs> Christopher Hall, there. A plate for you, Linda. Something. I reckon folks should be uh, made to vote, you know. The hours I've put in this last few days at that centre. What are you moaning about, Percy? You get paid for it, don't you? Oh, for the hours I grant you, but I don't get anything for the extra responsibility. Oh, you'll get a few kind words, I dare say, Mr. Sugden, when the speeches are made at the death. Oh, aye, and I'll be across there as well. Aye, those back room lads did you ever spot at the limelight? It's just a, a crying shame but won't do the democratic duty. My eyes on sweet Molly Moon. She was I'll get the round table. Put your purse away, Linda. This is my treat. Listen, muscles. How do you fancy a club later on? I mean, all of us, you know. No thanks. Not the state Pete gets in. We'll be making tracks after this one anymore. He'll be legless. Well, if you need to put him to bed. Oi, ale is it? Or neck oil? Cry cockles and muscles and I will I will. Crimea Street, that's my epitaph. You can put that on my gravestone. Henry thought I were doing it, I thought he was doing it. Canvassers, we ought to be dropped from a dizzy height. 
I won't mind, but I had support down Crimea Street. I mean, it used to be a labour stronghold and I nursed it. Only last year I got them residents only parking. I went to untold trouble and miser. Look, I've got all dressed up. Are we honouring this count thing with us presents or shall I go to bed with me Rupert book? Well, what's the point? Labour will romp on. Oh, come on. Now show a bit of bottle. You walk it. Oh, no. Ken Barlow's the only certain winner tonight. He's wangled it, hasn't he? I know what he's after. A safe Labour ward, leader of the council, member of parliament. He plans long-term as our Kenneth. Yeah, 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 he's got line to the Kremlin. Look, I don't care what you say, he's got this election taped. It's an exercise in vote splitting to get Labour in. Well, I'm going over there. Now, where, would you like me to make an announcement? Say you've thrown the towel in. Crime history, I don't believe it. What a fiasco. Evening, Councillor. This is Robert. Oh, yeah, I don't know. You can stand the waiting. What's the worst of the thumbscrews? Aye, ah, well, I'm not worried, you know. I'll be well rid. I've done a good stint, you know. If folk don't want me after all I've done, fair enough. Good evening, Liz. Good evening, Councillor. Be well. Good evening. Good evening. Mr. Sugden, isn't it? Caretaker. That's correct. Have we met? We have, and all. This morning, in fact. I were parking my car. Oh, yes. Can we see your pass, please, sir? Pass? I don't need a pass. I'm dead man here. I'm in charge of these premises. I'm sorry, Mr. Sugden. No pass, no admission. Not with counting, full swing. Any road. It's past time for shutting. I say! At last, for heaven's sake, Alf, where have you been hiding? Down Crimea Street, gnashing my teeth. Not to mention weeping and wailing and tearing his hair. Oh, Mr. Mayor. Oh! Nice to see you. Hi. Enjoyed it. Hello. Nice to see you. Excuse me. 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 Well, at least Becky Four Eyes won't be able to gloat. Uh, have, you, have you noticed something? Notice what? We've been here ten minutes, nobody's spoken to me. Don't talk, Daft. It's that ten seconds since the mayor shook your hands. Oh! <laughs> have you seen that woman's hat? <laughs> Look, I'll be straight with you, I'm very disappointed. I mean, I thought you'd have found time this afternoon. Like I said, Alex, we're very busy men. Look, there's no angle, you know. I mean, I, I'm in the trade. I rent these machines. It's all strictly legit. I never dreamed of it out else, Alec. It's just that we're very pushed out. All right. <laughs> <laughs> Look, uh, Alex, excuse me a minute. Hey, yeah, uh, where you Oh, well, what about Pete? Pete's got other plans. I'll see you. Come on. Come on, Lynn, the night's young. I hope it's a miserable. She never used to be so miserable. Still, she's a great lass. Yeah. She'll have the bed warm. This lad here fancies my Judy. He just confessed. Oh, no, she's dead straight, dead straight. A wonderful woman. How do you find him? Oh, look, come down to Disco. I'll online you one up. Yeah, well, he can pick him. He can pick him. <laughs> Don't worry, I'll fix you up. I'll fix you both. I'm fixed up the line. Do you want fixing up, eh? Yeah, come on. King of the barracks, this lad, you know, my best buddy. Come, come on, on I'll on, fix you up. Come on. You carry on, and uh, I might join you later. Come or on. I might even take a rain check, get the sack early, all right? Oh, you take care, okay? See you. Great lad, but no stamina, right? Hey, let's go to Starlight. Take it easy now. Hello, are you the first of the rush? Ten rush? From across the road, the victorious candidate born shoulder high by hordes of thirsty supporters. You'll be lucky. Hey, now this fella knows some of we do. I've just been over there, haven't I? Picked Susan up. Doors still locked. Well, I reckon they'd have a result by ten o'clock at the latest, didn't they? Must be getting near. Oh, whiskey and water, please. See ya. Bye-bye. See ya. You're taking bets, are you, Alec? My money's on Deirdre. Alphanas are doing well, but we reckon Pearson's in the lead by a short head. Looks like Alf's catching up. God, I haven't had any for ages. I can't say it much more. You do look a bit pale. <sighs> she needs some air. No, she doesn't. What she needs are those few vital votes. So what do I do, Forger?
I get a few, then Labour get a few. I mean, last time, my majority was nearly a thousand. It must be down to Crimea Street. Oh, for God's sake, give Crimea Street a rest, will you? It's your image, Alf. Well, that's not my fault. I keep telling him he should lose weight. What are you talking about, love? It's, uh, happened again. Pete's in the state, is he? Yeah, he's, uh, with Curly. I don't want to see him. Uh, listen, uh, when I said he was with Curly, what I meant was that they've both gone out on the razzle. They've both gone clubbing it. Which, uh, means that we've got the house to ourselves for the rest of the night. 2 a.m. in the morning before Pete's putting his key in the door. If he can find the lock. Oh, I see. Fancied another art to art, did you? More sob stuff about your long lost child than that. Well, no, not exactly. No? Perhaps you think it's our fortunes or something. Listen, Linda. No, you listen, sunshine. You've got the wrong idea and the wrong address. I'm not Madam Sin, you know. This isn't Stretton. Then why the signals? <coughs> well, don't play the innocent. I can read signals, you know. Can you? Brilliant. They could use you on British Rail. Come on. You've been giving me the green light. Are you playing games? Are you daft or is it just conceit? Look, if I got the wrong idea... If... I'm... God, you bloody action men! Wooden track minds. All a woman's got to do is look, be pleasant, hey, polite. just cool it. Cool right? it? You're lucky I don't scream the place down and keep your hands off me. Okay, all right. Friendship, marriage, fidelity. They've got no price in your code after Terry. All comes down to sex. I'm sorry. Yeah, well, you will be when Pete gets to hear about this. I'll just get out. Here are the results of the election of councillor for the Weatherfield North Ward. I, the undersigned, the deputy returning officer at this election, hereby give notice that the number of votes recorded for each candidate is as follows. Get on with it. Andrews, Geoffrey Allen, 453. Barlow, Deirdre, 811. It's Labour. Pearson, Frank, 779. We've got it. Proudfoot, Mark, 502. You're in. Roberts, Alfred Sidney, 800. And four. <laughs> seven majority. Seven rotten, lousy, stinking votes. Oh, hold me hand up, Alf. I reckon at the death it come down to Crimea Street. No, in the lad, it's closer to home than that. Never mind. There was always next out. I mean, I tried to win Miss Skegness five years running. Nah, there's always the river. Anyway, I'll see you, Henry. Come on, love. It's all over by the shouting. I thought you can get a loser's medal. Oh, what are you talking about? Look, excuse me, my wife's not sitting too. Deputy Returning Officer, ladies and... I say! Oh, morning, Mr. Sugden. Oh, you do realise that then, do you? What? That that's what time of day it is, morning. Oh, I'm sorry, did I get you out of your pit? 
I've been up for hours. Hey, well, keep your voice down, eh? Think of the others still in bed. <laughs> it's not funny, you know. Oh, I'm sorry, Mr. Sugden. If it makes you feel better, shall I go and throw myself under a bus or something? Well, that would do for starters, I suppose. So just think on in future, right? Yes, Mr. Sugden. I see. Rommel. What the hell are you doing up there? Well, I'm thinking of jumping, aren't I? Unless, of course, you can get Emily Bishop round to try and talk me out of it. Well, get your flaming skates on. Pete will think we've got lost. You've, uh, you've not seen him yet, then? No, I said we'd pick him up at his house. Oh, aye. And when did you come to that arrangement, then? Last night, at the disco, when you were so flaming conspicuous by your absence. Now, are you coming, or what? Look, uh, I'm feeling dog rough. I think I've got a touch of the uh, flu or something. Uh, I'll try and catch up a bit later, all right? Well, hang on. How much later? So, how are you feeling this morning, then? Oh, well, a bit like one of them beauty queens, really. The morning after they've just been crowned Miss World. But mind you, I will say this before anyone else does. There, the resemblance begins and ends. <laughs> I do think Ken slipped up, though. Ken? Yeah, not bringing me any champagne with me morning toast. <laughs> mind you, then again, thinking about it, champagne at this time in the morning is about as attractive as runny eggs. Yes. How about a nice cup of tea, eh? Just get the fur off us tongues. That would be nice. Right. Oh, this card. Tracy's work, I take it. Oh, yeah, bless her. Do you know, she must have been up half the night doing it. I cried my eyes out when I saw it. God, I'm daft, though. Probably simple reaction after last night. I mean... Let's face it, it was what you might call a close-run thing. Yeah, I suppose it was, really. And I'd just like to say right now, Emily, thanks. In fact, thanks for everything. Oh, for what? What do you mean, for what? For all your help these last few months. I honestly don't think I'd have made it without you. Oh, good Lord, Deirdre, I was just one of the men who put the shoulders to the wheel, really. Never mind about shoulders. What you were was my good right arm. And don't think about vanishing back into the woodwork now it's all over either. Because, well, now I've been elected, I'm going to need more help than ever. Quite honestly, I'm, I'm terrified. What nonsense. You'll make a fine counsellor. Do you really think so, Emily? I'm sure you will. And if I hadn't thought so, I'd never have volunteered to help in the first place. Yeah, well, you just keep saying that, will you? Because somewhere inside my head, there's this mean little voice saying something very different. The gist of the message being, Deirdre Barlow, a councillor of this parish? Now, you really have got to be joking. Look, Alf, it's not the end of the world, you know. Have I said it was? No, love, you haven't actually said it. Look, it's not losing that gets me down. Look, well, not really. I mean, what's the blooming marvels about being a flipping councillor anyway? They don't need a councillor around here. They want a blooming Aunt Sally. Mm, well, right. I mean, it's just the, the rank flipping on gratitude. Honestly, love, I wish there was something I could say or do. Mm, I'll go. He's up then, is he? Yes. Now then. Now then, Percy. How are we this morning, then? Oh, it's fine. Right, off. Oh, fine. That's the spirit. No point in letting these things get us down, you know. Well, we're not doing. No, I mean, it's not everybody, you know, that can take rejection. For starters, I mean, take your average political leader. How do you mean, Percy? Well, you see him on television, don't you? It's election time. All cocky, grinning, as bold as brass. Making promises and all they never have to keep if he's daft enough to vote them in. And see what happens to him if they lose, though. The age 20 years before your very eyes. Now, don't you go letting that happen to you, lad. Just because you're elected, they decided to give somebody younger a bit of a chance. Yeah, I'll try to let it not. Yes. And if it is a woman that beats you, so what? Well, what's the fact of her being a woman got to do with anything? No, that's what I'm trying to tell him, isn't it? Because there are some men it would matter to. Strong men, it, it, it would destroy, would that? Being bested by a woman. Well, not even a woman, really, just a slip of a lash. Uh, what was it you said you wanted, Percy? Oh, I don't want anything. No, I was just passing. I thought, least I could do is stick my head round the door and offer a few words of sympathy and commiseration. And just to let this lad know, he still has one friend left round here. Well, I'm sure that's very good of you. But that's cheered him up a lot, right, off. Oh, aye, greatly. <laughs> ah, well, like we used to say back in 1940, are we downhearted, are we eckers like Right? Right. Well, I'll be seeing you then, Councillor. Oh, but of course it didn't count anymore, is it? Still, never, whatever. I'll see you later. Bye-bye. Yeah. 
So, gone back to Sherwood without you then, have they? You merry men. That's right. What's up with him today then? Well, that, as you say, Betty Love is the. Um... Yes. <laughs> you? No, I've got a funny feeling. Hello. 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 Can I have uh, half a bitter for me, please, and a vodka and tonic for Rita? Oh, excuse me a minute, yes. love. And uh, how's the video of Well, did you catch up with him? The fellow with the bloodshot look in his eyes who was asking after you this morning. And who the hell's that, then? Alec Gilroy. Well, weren't you supposed to ship some stuff for him this morning? Only he was in my shop and he was steaming because none of you lot had turned up. Oh, I see. Well, who did you think I meant? I had no idea who the hell you meant, had I? Excuse me. Well, you're a laugh a minute today. <laughs> hey! I hope you weren't thinking of supping that bubbly in here. Or were you thinking of paying us corkage on it? As a matter of fact, it's a winning anniversary present of my wife. Which, out of the kindness of my heart, I was going to share with you lot. Oh, well, that's different. Gloria, yeah. best glasses, love. Right. Ah. Also, it's not just an ugly rumour, then, that you lot are supposed to be in what is laughingly known as the removal business. Well, that's amazing, is that, Alec? What is? Well, I was just this minute talking about you. Right, Pete? Right. Oh, yes. Yeah, as the van pulled up then, I said to my mate Pete, the first thing we've got to do is get hold of Alec Gilroy and explain to him why we couldn't do his job. Right, Pete? Right. It's telepathy, is that? Or something. So, why didn't you do it then? Well, as a matter of fact, we were on the way to do it, but we got held up. Oh, yeah, so by Dick Turpin. <laughs> Dick Turpin. <laughs> hey, tell me, do you write these side putting one liners yourself or what? <laughs> Dick Turpin. Oh, OK, Doc. Right. Oh, now then, a party on, is there then? Yeah, do you want one, Alec? Go on, if you twist me arm. Better get another bottle, Betty. Oh, it's just ours and all while you're at it, eh? What's the occasion? Oh, nothing much, just a wedding anniversary, that's all. Oh, I see. More of a wake than a party, then, really. Have you ever wondered what a ship feels like when it's just been christened? <laughs> oh, Jack. Hello. Hello, love. That's Terry been in. Well, he was here a few minutes ago. He must have nipped round the back, love it. Uh, Betty? Yes? Are we still on tonight? You know, this celebration yeah. is for dear Yeah, of course, yeah. You'll be wanting food laid on as well, won't you? Yeah, it's possible. Listen, if there's money on the table in this pub, love, anything's possible. Don't worry. My treat, darling. What it means is it's our treat. All right. Anything you say? No, not yet. Well, 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 if it's not our little invalid. Miss me, have you? Not so as you'd notice. How are you feeling, Anna? Well, you know, still a bit frayed round the edges, isn't it? Well, that's what you get for having an early night. So, uh, everything's under control, then? Just about. <laughs> Wife's not speaking to me this morning, mind, but apart from that. You've uh, been a naughty boy, have you? So she reckon. I'm afraid I can't really remember. <laughs> still, you cope, then? Yeah, it's mine. It is now, I reckon. Right then, the toast. Hey, hang on a minute, Bradley. You're not thinking of making a speech, are you? Do you want me to? No, 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 no. <laughs> Right then, to Mike and Susan. Mike to Mike and Susan. Mike and Susan. Mike and Susan. Oh. 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 So, well, uh, I'll see you two a bit later on then. All right. You what? Look, I'm still not feeling 100%, am I? I've got a bug or something. Well, he hasn't travelled as far as your supping arm. Look, supping's one thing, innit? Humping great big heavy jukeboxes is something else. Come on, girl, we can manage. You get off home and get your head down, mate. Cheers, Pete. Good to know somebody around here still cares. Yeah, only he doesn't know you the way I know you, does he? See you later, mate, all right? Right, Pete. You're up to something, you, aren't you? Who, me? You. Yes, you. Definitely. Up to something. You don't mind, then? Mind? Yeah, about this party tonight. Why should I mind? It was a great idea. I mean, let's face it, love, if I minded, I wouldn't be paying for it, would I? 
Oh, hang on a minute. I thought Mike was paying. Uh, no, no, that's what he thought. Oh, well, it was a nice thought, though, Ken, on their part. On oh, Susan's part, possibly. Don't know about him. I mean, let's face it, love. I doubt he's ever had a nice thought in his life. Bayek, you don't forgive, do you, Ken Barlow? Or forget. Me and the elephants, love. Me and the elephants. See you. Councillor. you even think it, don't, because I'm not here to crow. What are you for? Well, for starters, to say how sorry I am. Sorry? Who for? Me? Oh, of course not. I'm not sorry for winning last night, either. I'm just sorry that it's caused so much bad blood between us, because honestly, as God is my judge, that is the last thing I wanted to happen. Yeah, well, water under the bridge now, isn't it? There was uh, just something else as well. Oh, yeah. Oh, we're having a bit of a do at the Rovers tonight. I just wondered if you and Audrey would like to come. Yes, of course we would. Why not? Oh, good. Oh, that's great. Right, so you're uh, about half seven, OK? Yeah, we'll be there. Bye. Sit down. Well, you might be there, love, but I most certainly will not. We'll both be there, Alf. Oh, come on, love. Oh, come on, nothing. Alf, we're going. I'll tell you why we're going and all, because I'm not having that lot out there going around saying we're bad losers. After what they've done to me, do you think I really care what they say behind me back? Oh, I care. I'll tell you why I care and all, because win or lose, love, life goes on, doesn't it? And whether you like it or not, we're going to be stuck with this lot around here for the next twenty odd years. Well, I don't want to go. What do you think I do? God, what's one thing got to do with it? It's going to choke me to go, you know. But I'll be there, right? I'll be there with my best frock on, big smile on my face. So will you, Alf. Right? Well, I'm not sure about the frock. Why don't you tell him then? Who says I didn't? You were worried about me, weren't you? What he might do to me. Don't flatter yourself. So then why? Because. Just be thankful that I didn't, that's all. Only, uh, don't go jumping to any wrong conclusions, eh? And what conclusions might then be? You feel the same way as I do. My God, but you're sure of yourself, aren't you? Anything but. No, very proud of myself, as a matter of fact. Yeah, what? Look, that does happen to be my best mate out there. You know, the lad that saved my scalp more than once. Then what the hell are you doing here, then? You know why. Because I can't bloody well help myself. Any more than you can, I reckon. You've got no right to say that to me, Terry. Absolutely Linda, no right. Linda, do you think I can't tell? Oh, yeah, experience, No, darling. no, I'm not. Not at this. Look, what I'm trying to tell you is I've never, ever felt like this about anybody before, ever. And don't think it's a great new experience, neither. Because it's not. Anything but. God. Tell me something, Terry. What is it about me? Tell me what it is about me. Go on. I don't know what you mean. I'm all about me, Terry, and men. All the men I've ever known. Don't think I mean that way either. Because despite what you might think, there have never been any. Ever. I believe that. Do you? Well, there's a novelty, because most men don't. Have you any idea what it's like living in married quarters? Here one year, there the next, and being somebody who does just happen to believe that as a woman, the least she should do is make a bit of an effort with herself. They have names for girls like that, you know, Terry. The lads. That's what I'm trying to tell you, Linda. It's not like that with me. Oh, yeah, gay or something, are we, Terry? I didn't say I didn't fancy you, did I? I'm 
don't talk about yourself like that. Let go of me. I just want you to go. Now. We need to talk. What's there to talk about? I'm a married woman, the wife of your best friend. I just want you out of here now. You're frightened, aren't you? Never. Me too. to go. Please, Terry. Please don't. They say about politics, isn't it, Emma? How do you mean? Well, however honourable your intentions are when you first set out, you still end up dishing it out with the best of them. I mean, when it really comes to the crunch. Come on, let's sit. Oh. <laughs> well, you're a posh beggar, aren't you? Why? Well, it wouldn't have choked you, would it? Just to let us pay for this one. Wouldn't choke me, love. Would perhaps just have stuck in my craw. Because of Mike, you know. Because of Deirdre, love. My wife, who against all the odds, has gone and got herself elected. Now, seems to me, if anybody shout to pay for this party, it has to be mine. And that's the only reason, is it, Dad? What else? Mm. What do you mean, they weren't in? It's not just that they weren't in, they'd done a bunk. You know, the archetypal moonlight flit. But, so where's the jukebox now? Oh, it's, it's in our yard, taking up valuable space. Oh, good, good. Uh, just hang on to it for a couple of days for me, will you? Well, yeah, it's going to cost you. Now, there is a surprise. What are you going to be when you grow up a piranha? <laughs> <laughs> you got that sorted, didn't you? Cheers. Well, well, look who it is. Been worried about me, have you? Well, we thought you'd gone to bed. What do you mean? Well, according to your mum, you've been out all afternoon. Well, you've been checking up on me, have you? Well, we thought you'd just left an address, you know, somewhere we can send the money to that we've been earning for you all afternoon. You know, I think you've been hanging around that woman far too long, Curly. What woman? Emily Flaming Bishop. We're going to sound like her. Gloria, can I have a pipe, please? All right, mate. Ready now, are we? Aye, why not? Excuse me. There you go then, cheers. Ah, cheers. Oh, by the way, I haven't had a chance to thank you. Thanks? Yeah, for the anniversary card. Much appreciated, mate. Oh, I see. We sent you an anniversary card then, did we? No, I mean, um, it's just for one more thing I wanted to explain, in case it got back, like, you know, and, and well, it sort of misunderstood, as it were, only, um, well, I... I actually voted for Alf. Well, that's what our system's all about, isn't it, Mavis? I mean, we do all have the democratic vote, the right to vote for whoever we think is best suited for the job. Oh. Yes, I know, well, I mean... Oh, sorry. Um, well, uh, that's really what I wanted to explain. I mean, just because I voted for Alf, well, it doesn't necessarily mean that I do think that he's best suited for the job, if you see what I mean. No, I'm, I'm not really sure if I do, Mavis. Oh, well... Like, what, what, what I'm really wanting to say is, um, oh, sorry, um, well, it all boils down to fear, really, doesn't it? Fear? Yes, of, of change. I mean, I've got this very deep-rooted fear of change, and I was, I, I was standing there in the actual voting booth, and, and my mind was still churning, and, well, in the end, I sort of compromised, really, and I cast my vote for out. I'd quite right to, Mavis. I mean, if that was what you thought was the right thing to do. You really don't mind? Of course I don't. Oh, good. <laughs> because just off the record, Deirdre, I'd much rather you won anyway. Oh, I, I, I was just telling Deirdre how at least I'd voted for you. Why not? I've just got a bit of bad headache, that's all. Oh, I'm sorry. 
It's all right. Well, do you mind if I stay for about half an hour or so? No, stay as long as you want. Are you sure? Yeah. All right, I'll see you later then. All right. Ta-da. Bye. Another satisfying constituent. And I've not even been sworn in yet. No, no, no. Oh, go on. Oh, do you have another? I don't think I should, honestly. I mean, half of it thinking I've run off with a milk and a stomach. Don't worry about Alfie. He'll be all right. He's better off on his own a bit, honestly. Do you think so? Oh, I know so, yes. I mean, whenever I've been disappointed in life, and let's face it, not many people have been disappointed as often in life as I have been. Well, I always like to be on my own for a bit, lick my wounds like. So, same again, is oh, it? Do you know they have cold time, maybe? Don't you think you've had enough, oh, anyway? no, no, nonsense, no. It may surprise you to know this, Audrey, but I've got a very strong head for drink. Oh, yeah? Yes, I always have had. They say it's a sign of character, you know. Yeah. <laughs> so, we'll let uh, break open a glass. <laughs> oh, Oh, Zach, the chocolate! Oh, yes. They're never still going strong, are they? Good for another hour, I'd say. My God, them were the days, eh, when we had stamina like that. Speak for yourself, you. That's <laughs> all. <laughs> My love. My God! Oh, no. It's out! What? It was about 
So where have you been all day then? You know, Summer, this is just about the beginning to get on my flaming wick, is this? What is? Well, you are, as a matter of fact. Listen, Curly, we're just partners, all right? You're not my flaming blood brother, and you're certainly not my mother. The way you go on about things, I sometimes wonder. Hey, there's an ambulance outside Roberts. He's off, I think. Hey, he's not gone him. Come on, come on, Mr. Robinson. He's trying to tell me, you know, Rita. He did. Come on. Down at the pub. No, no, no. I just wouldn't listen. Now, listen. I mean, I should have listened. Audrey. Audrey. He's going to be all right. I just thought it'd be an old man. He really is. Now, don't get like that, love. Al's going to need all the help he can get. Could you clear a way through, please? What's wrong with him, Alan? But oh, it doesn't look good to me. That's it, Tilda. Let's all look on the bright side, eh? Audrey, would you like me to come with you in the ambulance? Uh, just the wife, please, love, if you don't mind. Well, in that case, I'll see you down there. All right, love. Come on. Yeah, all right. Come on, love. I'll run you down in the car. What after the skinful you've had tonight? All right, let's get a taxi then. Good minute, love. Thank you. Now, that's just stupid. Is it? Yes, well, of course it is. Now, look, let's nip this in the bud straight away. I mean, you don't even know what's wrong with him yet. Well, it's obvious he's had some sort of heart attack, isn't it? Well, possibly, but we don't actually know that, do we? And even if he has love, it's still got nothing to do with you. Oh, come on, Ken. No, I mean it. Grown men don't go having heart attacks just because they've lost a local election, for God's sake. I mean, let's face it, love, if it hadn't been you that had beat me, well, it would have been somebody else, well, wouldn't that, it? That's no rotten consolation, is it? I mean, the fact is, it was me, wasn't it? Now, listen to me, love. Alf Roberts has been in the hurly-burly of politics for, what, for 20 years. Now, losing an election to a man like that is a setback. Yes, of course it is, but that's all it is. It's certainly not something we'll bring on a coronary, not unless a coronary was going to happen anyway. I wish I could believe that. I really wish I could believe it. I'm telling you the truth, love. Now, you really have got to be sensible about this. Do you hear? Yes, I hear. I'm just not sure I happen to agree with you, that's all. Do you think we should go? Go? Yeah, to the hospital. Oh, what good would that do? I don't know. I, I just feel as if we should go. Well, tomorrow perhaps, but certainly not tonight. You mean, because under the circumstances, we'd be the last two people he'd be likely to want to see, right? I mean, we don't know what state he's in, do we, love? Whether he's fit to see anybody, perhaps not even his wife. Did somebody die? Oh. Don't say things like that, Tracy, love. Mrs. Roberts. No, thank you. Sorry. Uh, shall I wait outside? Yeah, all right. Be all right? Yeah, I'll be all right. See you later. How is he? Has he seen a doctor yet? They're, they're in there with him now. Hey, he's going to be all right. Do you hear me? 
Thanks for coming. I don't know what I'm going to do, Reed. <laughs> now he's not. Now you can stop that sort of silly talk straight away. I'm sorry. Oh, I lost my hiding now. Here, tissue. Thank you. <laughs> Mrs. Roberts. This is Mrs. Roberts. Yeah. Right. Now then, the bad news is that he does seem to have had some sort of heart attack. Oh no. The good news is that it was only a mild one. Does that mean he's going to be all right? Well, we do need to hang on to him for a few days, of course, just to make sure. But on the evidence available at the moment, I can see no reason why not. Oh, thank God. C can I see him now, then? Of course. on your feet being up all night. Well, I must admit, I do feel like someone from one of those horror movies. What's it called again? The March of the Zombies. Then why don't you get your head down for an hour? No, it's all right, lovey. Just as long as someone's looking after the shop, so uh, go and open up for us, would you, before the bread men get here. What are you going to do? You are going to get yourself off to bed, aren't Sarah, you? Sarah, love, I wouldn't sleep if I did. I know, but at least you'd be lying down, wouldn't you? Because I'm telling you, if you don't watch it, you're going to end up down at that hospital yourself, aren't you? Oh, well. And the next bed to in. At least we'll be company for one another then, won't we? Yeah. Oh, I'll go. You just sit yourself down. Hello. Sorry, mate. Oh, good Oh, you're back. I'm back. Right, I'll go and open up then, shall I? Thanks, lovey. Now then, uh, tea bags are through there, are they? I, I don't think I could face another cup of tea, honestly, Hilda. Oh, give over. Nice, strong cup of tea is just what you need after the nasty shock you've had. Now, you take the weight off your feet, I'll see to everything. Uh. Oh. oh, and uh, just in case you should get the wrong idea, I'm only here to help out as a good neighbour should, not to nosy. Thanks, Elton. Of course, uh, if there is anything you'd like to get off your chest, I mean, uh, appertaining to the situation regarding Alf, like, uh, well, just go ahead. I'm here to listen if you want me. Right. Right. <laughs> What the hell's that doing there? It's Alec Gilroy's, isn't it? Well, I thought it might be. Either that or you and Pete's taken to running dinnertime discos or something. What I said, though, was what is it doing there? I don't know. You don't know? You mean it just sort of shimmered into being before your very eyes like some sort of TARDIS or something? Look, Alec Gilroy asked us if we could hang on to it for a few days, that's all. Oh, he did, did he? Now, why the hell would he do that? It's not hot, is it? No, no, I don't think so. Very comical. I don't suppose you bothered to ask him, did you? No, we didn't. Why not? Because it's not bothering us, but obviously it's bothering you. Look, look, seeing as you've condescended to rejoin our little band of brothers, why don't you go and find Alec Gilroy and ask him? And then you can come back here and tell us, can't you? Morning. 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 Is it? Oh, like that then, is it, this morning? This morning and every morning these days. Oh, why? Your wife been beating you up again, has she? I just don't understand her. I just do not understand her. What do you mean? She just won't let it drop. What? About this job. She had another go at me this morning about it. Practically pleading with me to jack it in. And, uh, did she say why? No, not really. That's why I'm telling you. It don't make sense. So what did you tell her? The same thing I told her the last time she mentioned it. If she can come up with something that pays better, I'll jack it in tomorrow. But until then, forget it. Well, that's right, isn't it? Well, I suppose so, yeah. You suppose so? Yeah, well, 
Well, what I mean is, what I mean is a job's a job, innit? Especially these days. But if she's dead set against it like you say she is, perhaps you should jack it in. Are you trying to get rid of me? Don't be stupid. No, look, all I'm trying to say is that no job's worth it, is it? I mean, breaking your marriage up for. Hi, love. Hoping then, are you? Yeah, just about. Yeah, do you want me to do them for you? Yeah, what are them great big mucky sprugs? Do I have to do There's got to be something I can be doing. Oh, I'm sure you'll think of something when we get home. I hope we don't collapse in front of you from sheer exhaustion. Oh, so it's true then, is it? You know, the uh, sort of better off now and again. Well, only when they've had a bath, actually, and they've got the engine off under the fingernail. Uh, I'll see you later. Ah! <laughs> <laughs> you might. Can I ask you something, Matilda? A straight question. Yeah, go on, ask away. <clears throat> this trip to real with, with over 60s, you haven't got enough to idea, have you? Me? No, why? Well, I had the impression over the last few days you weren't exactly bubbling over with enthusiasm at Prospect. Well, I'm looking forward to it. Honest? Yeah, of course. Oh, good. Now then, Mrs. O, got your bucket and spade packs, have you, and your water wings? Listen, just keep your voice down, will you, Kevin? Ah, top secret, is it? This jaunt of yours with Uncle Tom's? Well, it won't be for much longer, will it, if you go shouting the odds all over the pub? Oh, I'm sorry, Mrs. O. Don't worry, no. Your secret safe with me. <laughs> You know what I mean, Hilda, look, that's exactly what I'm on about. What? Well, is it that top, top secret with you, like, you know, as far as you're concerned? No, of course not. But you know what they're like round here. I think they must lead very empty lives, some of them, the way they're always ready to mind other folks' business for them. No, but while you and I both know that this holiday's all proper and above board, like, well, no sense in filling folks' mouths for them, is there? Fair enough, I suppose. Mm. So where's Porthos? I'll do a mean D'Artagnan. You know what he's on about. Of course. He's making a literary allusion to that famous French classic, The Three Musketeers. Or in other words, he's noticed that one of us is missing. Right, Kevin? Yeah, so where is he? Or is he still sleeping it off? Well, if you must know, he's gone home to have his dinner with his wife on the advice of Terry here. Right, Terry? Oh, marriage counselling now, are we, Terry? That's right. So any time you're having any problems yourself, you know, just send your Sally round and I'll soon straighten her out. Yeah, that'll be the day. Hey, is there anybody in there? Yeah, all right. Come on. I suppose you could force one down, could you? I won't say no. Get one down your neck. Okay. Well, I, for one, would have said Alf Roberts was the last yeah, person in the world to have a heart attack. No, no, I just said he was just a sort of person. Well, I suppose he is a bit yeah, on the heavy side, yeah. even for his height. Yeah. No, no, I don't mean that, Betty. I'm oh. talking about stress. Oh, well, pressure does creep up on you. I mean, running a corner shot. Well, look what it did to Mavis Riley. Last night it no. drove her to drink. Oh, oh it's this morning. Well, when last seen, not exactly in the market for streaky bait. <laughs> no, what I'm talking about is his political career. You know, all those late night sittings and oh, things. Oh, come on. Before the other night, well, all Alf was was a councillor, not the flaming foreign secretary with his own hotline. Oh, still, it does prove what I've always said. If your name's on the bullet, don't bother to dodge it, because you'll be wasting your time. What do you reckon, Curly? Well, I think you should take a quick vote on it and then get the tail pulled. <laughs> Listen, we're taking it easy from now on. Didn't you know that, Curly, love? I mean, what happened to Alf, you know? It's come as a dreadful warning to us all. Oh, I And you think you'd be able to tell the difference? <laughs> oh, you cheeky monkey. <laughs> Kids. Are you sure you're going to be able to manage, love, really? Hey, stop worrying, will you? Just get yourself up there. Hey, give him a big hug and kiss from me while you're at it. Yeah, I will, Hello. Hi. Have you uh, not been up to the hospital yet, then? I'm, I'm just going up there now, actually. Well, when you do see him, will you give him our best? Right. What will you do about your dinner, though, Lord? Oh, don't worry about it. I'll grab a butty between customers. Listen, if you want somebody to stand in for you for an hour, I'm available. Oh, oh what did you say? <laughs> I said I'll help. In fact, I'd be glad to. See, Chipotle, you've got a nerve. You have, really. Sorry. Yes, yeah, so you should be sorry. After what and that you and that smarmy husband of yours have done to my house. Look, Audrey, I, I came here to... You've come here to ease your conscience, love. To hear me say let bygones be bygones. Of course I don't mind the way you two have hounded him out of office. But guess what? I do mind. And I'll tell you why, shall I? Because whatever them doctors might say, there's just one thing and one thing only that's put my elf where he is today, and that's what you two have done to him. Audrey, that's not fair. But, it's oh, not fair and you well, know it's it. It's what you've done fair. Eh? 
Using that newspaper of yours to crucify him, getting him out so you could go in? What? Well, all I can say, lovey, is enjoy it while you can. Because, you know, life has a very funny way of coming round. And one of these days, somebody might just come along and do the same to you. My God, I hope I'm still here to see it. Meanwhile, take your bleeding heart somewhere else, will you? Because as far as I'm concerned, you're going to get no consolation here. See you, love that. How dare she talk to you like that? How dare she? But perhaps she had a point, eh? A point? Yes, a point. I mean, let's face it, I suppose, in a way, we did hound him. He tried to get me the sack. Very nearly managed it. I'm not saying there weren't faults on both sides, Ken. All I'm saying is... Well, if I'd known it was going to turn out to be half as mucky as it's turned out to be, you wouldn't have got me within 500 miles of a run domination! Just try to think of it as a warning, really. To change your lifestyle, take things easier. And most important of all, stop getting uptight about things. Because, frankly, it isn't worth it. Still, plenty of time to go into that in a bit more detail later. For the moment, let's just concentrate on getting you back on your feet again. All right? Right, Doctor. Thank you. Yeah, that's very much, Doctor. Well, that's it then, love. No more hang gliding from me from now on. Oh, come on. You heard what she said. You'll be fine, just so long as you're sensible from now on. I heard what she said, love. So what are you saying? You don't believe her? I can see the writing on the wall as well as the next man can. What writing on the wall? Well, what I mean, Audrey, is... We just got the face in, love. I mean, no matter how well I feel now, whether we like it or not, things are never going to be quite the same again, are they? Just to make magazines for him past the time when he gets home. Oh, don't worry, I'll send to them. There's nothing in them to get him going. <laughs> That's of its kind. Yeah, do you know, I thought I'd uh, put a rice pudding in the oven for him. What do you think? I mean, if I was to use skim milk. Oh, haven't they give you a diet sheet? Oh, gets that today when he leaves, together with all his other do's and don'ts. Oh, it's probably just common sense, really. Oh, I don't think I'm very good at being a nurse, Rita. <laughs> You'll cope. It's not as if you're going to be pushing him round in a wheelchair, is it? Thank God I'm not. Right. He'd probably have to take things easy for a bit. Might even have to lose a bit of weight, but that won't do him any harm. Give him fresh fruit, you mean? Oh, he's not going to like that. Well, he'll have to learn to like it. Probably have to learn a few new different attitudes if he wants to stay well. Yeah, well, that's another problem. Keeping his mind off the flipping shop. Well, look, young Sally seems very capable to me. But, but she can't cope single-handed all day, and I'm not going to have much time to help out. Audrey, I'm sure Deirdre would step in if you asked her. I can't. Not after the mouthful I gave her. No, I shall just have to manage on my own, being matron, chief, cook and bottle washer, two places at once. Hey, lady, <sighs> stop feeling sorry for yourself. Now, come on, comb your hair, put your lipstick on, and you go and bring your fella back home. Yeah. Well, at least I am fetching him home, aren't I? Right. Do you know, it's true. You don't know how much you need them till you nearly lose them. Oh, hello. Oh, hello, Curly. Hey, are you any good at this? No. No, I'm not really. Oh, well, you can't be any worse than I am. Uh, look, I'm not staying. I just popped in to The see lads aren't here. They've gone down to look at some warehouse. Yeah. Yeah, Pete did mention. I, uh, could have sworn he said he were meeting you there. Well, that's right, you see, but this is urgent, and Terry, well, he's a lousier typist than I am. Yeah, well, I'll, uh, leave you to it then. Oh, uh, shall I give him a message? Who? Pete. Oh, no, just something I forgot to ask him before he left the house this morning. It'll do tonight. I'll, um, see you. See ya. Sorry to keep you waiting, Mr. Roberts. I expect you're raring to go. I won't be sorry to get home. Though I'm very grateful for all you've done. Oh, yes, we both are. The only thanks we want is not to see you back here again, all right? Oh, well, I'd like to think so. There's no reason at all you shouldn't live to a ripe old age if you're prepared to abide by a few simple ground rules. That's it, then. You've got an invalid on your hands from now on. Well, if you want to wrap yourself in cotton wool, Mr. Roberts, that's up to you. But you won't get much fun out of life, and your wife won't either. 
Yes, we've been uh, given all these booklets about what to do. Good. And the dietitian's worked yeah. out a diet plan for you? Yes. She says he could do with uh, losing a bit of weight as well. <laughs> Stick to that and he will. Plenty of fish, fresh fruit and vegetables, brown bread, cut down on the fats, dairy produce, less of the steak and kidney pie. <laughs> You don't smoke, so that's one thing you won't miss. I'm not what you call a drinking man, Doctor. No, he's not. Uh, does that have to go as well? I'd give up the beer, if that's your tipple. Though the occasional short can actually be beneficial. So long as you take it with a slimline mixer. <laughs> the dreaded calories again. <laughs> Exercise. Well, nothing strenuous. If you were thinking of going home and digging the garden, forget it. <laughs> but we do advise you to keep active. Take a walk, morning and afternoons. Anything else? Uh, well, when can I get back to work? Oh, come on. Well, you don't need to worry about that. Not yet. You run a grocery shop, don't you? Uh. Well, I'd give it a few weeks and then start back again gradually. If you've a handy young man around, I'd get him to shift any heavy cartons or things. I'm sure Kevin would oblige. Right. Well, you know about your tablets, when to take them. You've got the leaflets. Yes. I think you'll find all your questions will be answered in there. And that's about it. <laughs> Goodbye, Mr. Roberts. Thank you. I'm sure you'll be fine, Mrs. Roberts. Uh, there is just one other thing, Doctor, um, about uh, us married life. No, Audrey. Relations may be resumed after four to six weeks, yeah. provided the patient has made an uninterrupted recovery. Yeah, well, we need. It's all in there. We need bother about that, love. But now. I mean, after that, I mean, it'll do him no harm. Audrey, love, uh, come on, love. We've, we've taken it off at the doctor's time, being she's a very busy person. He's only done it twice. First time he was sick, and the second time his hat blew off. Linda? Hello? It's me. Listen, I heard you were around this morning. Yeah, I um, had a message for Pete. Message for Pete? Nothing. We both know why you came. Not without to stop thinking Not about it. shut up, will you? No, I won't shut up. We've got to talk, right? Now listen, meet me at the Black Ball at 12, okay? I can't. Look, I don't want to hear that you can't. Bye. You just be there, all right? Right, are you coming then? Are you going to be chatting up birds all day? He says it was a girl. You don't put your sexy voice on for blokes, Teddy. Yeah, well, it's uh, Jane. Auctioneer's daughter. That puts a fair bit of business our way, doesn't he? Uh, just a PR exercise, is it then? Well, why else would I bother to meet a sexy young girl when I can be supping with Pete and the lovely you? Come on. Don't tell me! You're off on your first official function, am I right? It's a mare-making ceremony, Percy, followed by a civic lunch. Oh, you'll have a few butterflies then, I dare say. Well, I might have. It was me being made mayor. As it is, I'm just hoping to get on some of the committees I want. That's been announced today as well. Oh, well, you've no chance, have you? I mean, no disrespect. She's as green as grass. They give jobs like that to them of experience. I see. And how do you reckon new councils get experience then, Percy? By listening and looking and keeping their mouth shut about things they know no about. Excellent advice, Mr. Sugden. It's a pity more people don't follow it. Come on. Alf, welcome home. How are you feeling? Oh, not too bad, you know. You want to get him inside, he looks worn out. Nothing of the sort, Percy. I'm enjoying a breath of fresh air. Well, I think he looks wonderful. Yeah, but he may look it. But he's got to take care of himself. Doctors say he's to have no stress. Well, quite. Anyway, Alf, glad to see you back. Uh, if we're not going to be late, love. Oh, right. Sir off to mayor making, you know. Where do you like the new mayor? And then they decide who's going to be on various committees. Then they have this slap-up lunch. Yeah, well, I do know what a mayor making is. I've been to one or two of my time, Percy. Just the two of you today, then? That's right. Come on, Carl, grubs up. You're getting on all right, are you now? Well, we always did. Well, maybe you did, but I think poor old Curly had his nose proud a bit when you first come on the scene. Yeah, we did overdo the memory lane bit, didn't we? We had some good times with you, Terry. Hey, you sound like you're 95 with everything behind you. Maybe the best bits are, love. No, you don't mean that. No, I'm a lucky chap. I've got a good wife and some good mates. Right, I'll leave you to eat in peace. Are you married, Gloria? Yeah. Oh, a couple of narrow squeaks, you know. You should try it, nice girl well, like you. Yeah. Some lucky chap's missing out. Thank you. I'll bear that in mind. Yeah. Okay, so listen, uh, yeah. 
said it's uh, not far down the East Lanks Road. And it's easy to find and all. Good, lad. Eat your dinner, it's getting cold. What are you doing here? Well, I've applied for permission now, do I? Stood you up, did she? Who's this? Nobody. He's always flaming out, isn't he? Hey, yeah. me and Curl went to have a look at that warehouse that we heard about. They're selling some good stuff. He's not interested. He's only interested in his own sordid little secrets. Just leave it alone, will you? No, you leave it alone. I'm sick of your lies for one day. Meeting Jane for a drink, were we? Where were you meeting her? A little taverna in Corfu, because that's where she's been all week. So it was some other girl. So what does it matter? It matters to me. I'm sick of being your private whipping boy every time your flaming love life goes wrong. Fellas, fellas, pack it in, will you? Get yourself a drink and calm down. If some bird's giving you some trouble, let's talk about it. Maybe we can sort it out. Well, three heads are better than one, right? Pete, you change. Thanks. Little miss is not joining you today, then, love? She won't shut the shop. Not even for ten minutes. Oh, well, there's such a thing as being too conscientious, as I know, to my cost. I don't think Sally minds. In fact, I think she quite enjoys being boss. Trouble if she's talking holidays now when I'll finally does get back in harness. Where'd you have earned one? Oh, I'd love nothing better to, to whisk her somewhere exotic better. If only had the brass. Oh. Are you both earning? I mean, it's different when you've only got one wage packet coming in. And then they penalise you with a single rum supplement. As if going away on your own weren't bad enough. Because previous years, you see, I've always had Rita. They'll have to follow Hilda's example, won't they, Hilda Lovey? Listen, that was told you in confidence. You know what gossips they are around here? They'll gossip a lot more if they find out for themselves than they will think you've got something to hide. <laughs> You know what costumes that Sunderland pick for you, don't you? Only flipping the harem girls. I'll give over. Pulling your leg. Not according to Phyllis Pierce, he's not. Mind, she's not bothered. She quite fancies herself as a bit of Turkish delight. Well, I'm not making a fool of myself for nobody. No. It's either a nice little cocktail frock or nothing. Then it'll be nothing. A pervert like him. Here! Ask him for yourself if you don't believe me. Isn't it right you're having the ladies dressed as belly dancers? <laughs> Who told you that rubbish? I had it on the highest authority. Well, if your highest authority is Phyllis Pierce, you're daft enough I gave you credit for. Look, what are we going to wear? It's about time we had some idea. Yeah, and how about us if it's tails we need to be hiring them? What's this weird us? I mean, they're only a flipping reserve. Oh. Yeah. So say somebody falls sick at the last minute. So say that I have to step in. So say I haven't got a costume because I'm only a blooming reserve. What do I do? Dance round in me gowns. Hey, oh, very nice. Right, you fit? Yeah. You got the keys? I'll give them. You? Yeah, but you've got them. Listen, lads, uh, I'll catch up later. Call the nature, all right? Yeah, all right. You've got them. Oh, yeah. You have. got them. I'll give them. I'll give them. You're fine. You're fine. Hello? Hello, Linda. It's me. Where were you this dinner time? I know what you said, but I thought you would come. Well, I told you I wouldn't. Listen, we can't leave it like this. It's insane. I'm going to be at the yard tonight, seven o'clock, and this time be there. Please. I can't, Terry. I'm going to give it an hour, all the same. Bye. Bye. How are you feeling, lover? Well, I feel a lot better if you didn't keep asking me every five minutes. I'm sorry. It's just hard to behave normal Well, when things aren't normal. They will be. They'll be as good as ever. Better. Oh, yeah. <laughs> hey, what's that jargon saying they have about the quality of life? That's what we're going to do from now on, love. Concentrate on the quality of our life. I just want you to stay fit. That's all I want. Well, it's not just what I want, love. I had some time to think when I was in the hospital bed, you know. And when either of us spring chickens, Audrey. Well, I'm certainly not. 
Yeah, well, maybe it's about time I stop cracking on that I am. Ah, well, we need to use the time we've got left. I mean, there's more to life than work, sleep and eat, you know. Well, what you got in mind? A world cruise? Yeah, no, not quite, no. Oh. But I thought we could get away at weekends into the countryside, seaside. You know, England's got some of the finest countryside in the world. I've not but seen but a fraction of it. <laughs> hey, I thought I might take up a hobby as well. Oh! Photography. What do you reckon? Good idea. As long as you don't mind a slightly wrinkled page three girl. Hey, steady on. I'm supposed to be convalescing woman. <laughs> it's all right. <laughs> I'll let you off the hook. Till you've got more colour in them dear little cheeks. Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh. <sighs> Can I come in? Yeah. Help! Deirdre for you. Oh. Just to cheer you up a bit. Oh, thank you, love. That's very thoughtful of you. The chocolates didn't seem appropriate. No. <laughs> listen, I'm sorry about earlier on. Oh, listen, we all know what purse is like. Well, the last thing I wanted was to upset you on your first day back. You didn't upset me, love. I've nearly forgotten about it now, anyway. Anyway, the way I'm feeling, I'll... I'd rather you were out there than me. Well, you wouldn't be feeling like this in the first place, look, would look, you, Father? Let it lie, love. It's water under the bridge now. So, how do you go on today? Oh, pretty impressive. A lot of them asked about you. Ah, uh, well, I dare say it'll take them a while to forget me. They'll <laughs> never forget you. You made a very important contribution over the years. One of them told me they used to have this saying, if you want out done, ask Alf Roberts. Ah, uh, well, I dare say that were true at one time. But you run out of steam, you know. Anyway, what committees did you get? Education and environmental oh. health. I did want housing, but no chance. Yeah, well, that's the big one. Mind you, mm. education has come to that. You did well to get that. Who's uh, leading the committee this year? A fella called Hathaway. Oh. Arthur Hathaway. Do you know, between you and me, he frightens the pants off me. <laughs> it's just his manner. He's all right, he's Arthur. He certainly knows the ropes. You do worse than make a friend of him. It's good of you to give me advice, Alf. Very good indeed. But what are mates for? Would you like a cup of tea, love? Or is just brewed up? No, thanks. I must get home, get into me glad rags, and then it's off to the civic reception. It's a long day. Ah, well, I appreciate you calling in, love. What are mates for? No, please don't. I had to come to try and make you understand. I do understand. I understand that I love you. That you love me. And what else is it to understand? That's not the point, Terry. Of course it's the point. We've got to make the most of it, haven't we? We can't. How often do you think this kind of thing happens in a lifetime? Don't make things worse for me, Terry. I came here tonight because I need your help. I need you to be strong, strong enough for both of us. We can't carry on seeing each other. We've got to stop. That's what I came here to tell you. That's why I'm here now. I don't believe you. I'm married, Terry. I... I love Pete. Of course you do. I do, Terry. I believe you. Honestly. You must do. Otherwise, you wouldn't have stayed with him for so long, would you? But it's not the same, is it? It's not the same as it is between me and you. Is it? You're not being fair, Terry. I'm not trying to be fair. I'm just trying to face up to facts and to get you to do the same. What about Pete? And what about you and me? And what about our lives and our futures? Oh, look, if there's one guy in this world 
I wish I hadn't have happened to him. It's Pete. But it's something I can't do anything about. Not now. Those cards have been dealt. As long as you get what you want, that's all right, is it? It doesn't matter who you trample into the ground to get it. That's what you're saying, is it? Look, sometimes somebody's got to get hurt. Like you, for instance. Like when that girl walked out and left you. Is that what all this is about? Getting your own back? Because of what happened to you? It's all to do with it. What was between me and Andrea? It's nothing compared to us. Okay. I felt a lot for her. She was part of my life. I admit it. While it lasted. It's just the same as you and Pete now. There comes a time when you've got to look at things again. You've got to take a, a long, hard look at your own life and your own future. There comes a time when you know, in your own heart, you just got to let go. I don't need all this, Terry. We were doing fine until yeah, you came up. Yeah, yeah, it was just magic, wasn't it? Look, just shut up, will you? Shut up, I don't want to know. We're having a meeting about us costumes. When are you free? Well, uh, when were you thinking of? As soon as possible, and I'm the one that's arranging it. With a little shove from me, Tom. How are you, folks? Well, the point is... All right, Tom. I'll tell them. Me and Tom won't be available for any meetings in the immediate vicinity because we're off to Rill for a week together. Look, I'm not trying to make this any tougher than it already is. Believe me. That's not what all this is about. Let me go, Terry. Just let me go. And is that why you came, is it? You came round here tonight. Well, you knew I'd be alone. You came round this morning. I came to explain, to try and make you understand. You came. Because you wanted to see me. You wanted to see me as much as I wanted to see you. You just can't keep away. The same as I can't keep away from you. And that's the size of it. And you know it. What the hell are you doing here? I came to finish those letters, didn't I? <clears throat> Should never have happened. Please just forget you ever saw anything, Curly. Forget. You were, Linda. Just a sudden, uncontrollable urge, was oh, it? Oh, for God's sake, Curly. Well, look, she's a very fanciable girl, isn't she? She's also your mate's wife. Curly, has anyone ever told you you have this decidingly boring gift of stating the obvious? Mate? Don't get funny with me, Terry. In my book, that's a pretty disgusting thing to do, even for you. What? Kiss a pretty girl? That was no casual kiss. There's something going on between you two, isn't there? Oh, no, no, Terry. She's the one you've been ringing! She's the one you've been sloping off to see, isn't so she? So what she is? It's none of your damn business, mate. Oh, I see. So I stand by and watch you make a mess of your life yet again. Not to mention theirs. You're out of order, sunshine. You don't own me. Nobody does. And what I do with my life, it's down to me. Okay? Mm. 
It's not on, though, is it, Terry? I mean, knocking off a mate's wife. I mean, well, there's, there's no redeeming feature, is there? I mean, practically part of the firm. Where do you get this knocking her off bit? Oh, come on, I've got eyes. Yeah, I have noticed. Four of them. Plus a very dirty mind, mate. Oh, so you don't deny you were necking with her, then? Have I denied it? Do you have to keep ranting on about it? Is it any of your flaming business, anyway? Well, I thought you had a code, Terry. I thought a mate's wife was a big taboo. You came the oracle with me and all I did was look. Okay, so look, I hold my hands up. I am flesh and blood after all. If a bird wants to be kissed, I kiss her. Look, okay, I'm a louse. So if you're going to rat on me, you're going to tell Pete, then tell him. But otherwise, just shut it. Well, there's no sign. You kidding? No, cross me out. I knocked. I did the wakey-wakey routine, not a peep. Well, there wouldn't be, would there? I mean, you bet at least spent the night on the tires, you could, you could chuck a bomb. She's not asleep. No, she's not there, Betty. I popped my head in. Oh, well, she's probably made an early start, you know. Gone out looking for mushrooms or something. Well, the bed's made. And as far as I can see, it's not been slept in. Mm -hmm. Wherever she went last night, she's not come home yet. Well, what can you do, I mean? <laughs> she's over 21. Well, fair enough, but it's still a fine start to a bank holiday, isn't it? I mean, it's a good job you've got a key or we'd still be standing in the street, wouldn't we? Yeah. I don't deny she takes liberties, but... She'll come swanning back, lovey, about noon, and if everything's not done and dusted... Mm. Make you sick, don't they, bosses? <laughs> I mean, I could have had the day off today. Don't have to work every hour God sends, you know. Oh, yeah. Got a sugar daddy, have you? Have I, heck. Rather have a cow bunker. <laughs> I mean, just think of your typical sugar daddy. Alec Gilroy? Well, exactly. I mean, just imagine waking up with his head next to yours on the pillow. Not a pretty sight. <laughs> oh, eh. Oh, you don't think... Oh, no, I can't believe it. I can it's all down to favours, you know that type. You know their time of lives. I've scratched your back, so you'll scratch mine. <laughs> hey, kinky. Now then, come on, enough of this levity. Come on, lovey. We're only the hired help here, so whatever Grace is up to, we'd better get shifted ourselves. Come on, bring right. it Right. Hello, Linda. Uh, is Pete in? No, he's just gone oh, down. Oh, what a pity. Uh, can I come in and use the phone? Oh, thanks a lot. You know all the tricks, don't you? Just playing it by ear, that's all. You know all the tricks and you don't take no for an answer. I had to see you. Tell me your hands off to your mind, please. We'll touch and we'll just... Look, it's no good, is it? The stay away routine. It's not going to work, is it? Look, I need time with you. Today, if never again. It's too chancy. We can swing it. All we gotta do is get Pete off the scene. And then what? I mean, we've tried your place. So Curly walked in. I well, don't worry about Curly. I don't. Curly's the type you can handle. Look, I need a day with you. That's all I need. Just a few hours. Just one lousy day. Come on. It's gonna be magic. It's gonna be unbelievable. No, Terry, forget it. Pete's got plans. There's a pal he wants to visit down New Brighton. Well, uh, would he go on his own? Right. And you make sure he does. There's a song, isn't there? I hear it every time you walk through that door. Temptation. <laughs> it's just the afternoon. That's all. Let's see if he can still send me up. Send you up. I wish I could. I don't have a thought sleeping up. You better up it, Terry. Go on, it could be my mum. Hey, don't let me down. Or I might do something daft. So you think you're a boxer, dear? Come on, get your, get your guard up. Come on, let me chin. Try it, me. <laughs> hey, up. <laughs> Hey, 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 don't be so rough if you're not climbing all over your ground, I'd your thumb. He's right, is the lad. He couldn't have the skin off a rice pot in that one. 
Come on then, what? let's have a fight. Hey. Just give over, will you? <laughs> Here, hang on to me coat. I'll oh soon my. sort this one out. What? Fifteen rounds, is it? Go in. You leave time. your boxing gloves. Oh, oh not oh, a bad time. Oh, 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 stop it, will you? It's got the devil in here today. <laughs> I'll say, you didn't fall far from the tree, that one. Mind you, when you think of his down. He's right, he's a lad. He yeah. shouldn't be stuck in on a spring day like this. Not like me. You want to get him down to the fair on them swing boats. That's where I'd be if I was fit. There isn't one not local. Wish there were. We'd be off like a shot. Anyway, come on, baby. Oh, yeah. Get you off to see your grandma, Ivy. Eh? It's got just like the trap of this room. <laughs> come on, I'll never see you. All right. Yeah, bye, 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 love. Bye, now. bye, love. Alan, come on, sit down, I'll brew up. Ah, join oh. the gang. No, thanks, no, I'm not stopping. I was just passing by and I thought you might want your video changing. What a good idea. Yeah? Are you open for business then or are we getting a big favour? Well, I thought I'd give it a whirl until tea time, you know. And then uh, I thought we'd go out for a meal. You're not opening yourself then, are you? I am not. No, I've learnt my lesson, don't worry. Opening? No. Mm -hmm. I've had my warning. Yeah, I suppose so. Well, shall I sort you one out or will you drop in? Oh, no, I'll pop in. But if I don't have time, we'll have to take potluck. Potluck? I don't think we've got that one. Oh. <laughs> oh, <well. laughs> Look, nothing too exciting, man. None of your spicy hey, stuff. Hey. Remember our conditions. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> you know, if I were you, I'd be up in the park sniff in the spring. I can't have seen so much of it so far. You in the shop and him up at the garage. The park, we're a bit more adventurous than that, Bessie. Ooh. We've got a couple of pushbikes outside. Oh, we're going to Cheshire, where oh. there's flowers, wildflowers. You can't even tell them from plastic. Yeah, so we borrowed a couple of bikes and we bought a punctured outfit. Oh. And when we get back, we'll pop in and let you know what colour the blue bag is. Have a nice time, yeah. lovely. See you, Bessie. Ta-ta, my love. Hello, Alec. Uh, You're Owen, are you? That's right, yes. I've given the rest of the band the day off, even the bongo player. No, it's just that we thought... Go on. Well, nothing really. Just thought you might have some company. Oh, yes, very droll. Just get us a large Irish, will you, and then let Bet know that I'm here. Bet? Yeah, that's right, Bet. The lady that runs the place. El Supremo. I'd like a word. Got it? Penny dropped? She's out. Is she now? That's very nice, I must say. Seaside, is it? Forget your debts, have a rump on the donkeys. Pardon my nose, but uh, you don't see me normal, happy-go-lucky self, Alex. Strippers after a rise, are they, lovey? Well, seeing as you mention it, Betty Flower, it has been one of them weeks. Uh, haven't seen much of Bet lately. <laughs> what the hell's the matter with you all this morning? No, I have not seen Bet. As a matter of fact, I'm on her trail and I'm beginning to think she's avoiding me. So if you see her, just give her a nudge and a whisper, will you? Should I whisper? Tenancy loan, monthly instalment, overdue payment. Oh, no. No, I don't think it's my place. And if you could call around tomorrow... Tomorrow? You're asking a lot. I've got an Irish tenor expecting his fee. And Irish tenors have dangerous tempers. Come on, Alec, it is bank holiday. We don't expect debt collectors. Oh, do us a favour. I mean, do I look like the sort of chap who would bleed a pal white? Look, I'll tell you what. Here's another message for my favourite licensee. No need to fret. No need to go into hiding. Just because she owes a devoted slave a few bob, I shall not go short. Always got a few quids stitched in me comms. If she does show up, I shall be in the office. <laughs> ah, uh, Mr Gilroy, uh, have you got a minute? My time is yours, so what's your problem? Well, it's about this jukebox. Which jukebox? I see no jukebox. I'm referring to the jukebox you've got stashed in our yard. Oh, oh that jukebox, yes. Uh, you're not letting it get rusty, I hope. Well, no, but if it's to stay there, I think we should discuss rent. Otherwise, I'd appreciate further instructions. Further <laughs> instructions? <laughs> By gum, you're a wonderful feed. Look, step into the office, son. Table service, Betty, if you don't mind. <laughs> hey, Arnie, how you doing? It's Pete. Pete Jackson. Me, I'm fine. How's New Brighton today? Only I thought I might nip up and see you. Oh, I don't know about Linda, that depends. Listen, are you still working at the same boozer? Well, keep us a jar on ice. I'll try and make it before you close at dinner. Yeah, yeah. Well, anyway, we'll have a few bevies tonight. I've got to hang up, Pip. I'll see you, Arnie. See ya. I just give a mate of mine a bus. Uh, I put 10p in. Oh, that's all right, China. No luck on it. Where's Curly? Oh, he's gone sorting this jukebox thing out. I met him on the way in. He bunged me the key. Slept in, did you? <laughs> yeah. 
Any plans for today? Now special. How about you? Got anything lined up? As a matter of fact, I have. Uh, that lad I just rang, he waits on in a big boozer down New Brighton. I've known him since school. Well, I could go on the train, but I thought if the van was going spare... Thank you. Need some juice, otherwise no sweat. Hey, you're only a belter. Do you fancy the trip yourself? Only I don't think Linda's too bothered, but she might come if you did. Especially if you lined a bird up. You see, the thing is, me and Arnie get talk and Linda feels a bit left out. You could both come. It's great down New Brighton. The air's like wine. <laughs> and as for the ale, if Arnie's on normal form, we'll be in for a few freebies. Well, I'm sorry to put the tin lid on out, but we've got an urgent job on. You'll be tickled pink to hear the jukebox has now got a permanent home. Oh, oh well, if that means I'm needed. No, don't talk soft. We can manage, can't we? I mean, what are we, a pair of wallies? <laughs> no, you get mobile, son. You've made arrangements. We'll see you tomorrow morning. Pity you can't make it. I mean, the mood limit. Come on, then. stood there, chinning. You'll have it dark. Go on. All right, then. I'll see you. See you. Cheers. Well, then, thanks for the wheel. So, uh, you saw out Gilroy, did you? Uh, hey, did What's I hear it? right? D did, you, did he mention wheels? Have you lent the wheels to him? All right, that's cool, eh? All right, I'm not going to go chasing after him, but I know what you're up to, you know. I mean, you're here, she's at home, and while Muggins gets himself bedded Look, down, you... this is personal, right? Stop trying to come the agony on. If I need advice, I'll write a Marge Proops. Got it? leaving all this to us. Well, according to big-hearted Alec Gilroy, she dodging him and all, isn't she? Well, why has he popped the question or something? It, it's a big secret. Oh, come on, Betty, all this mystery. Look, she owes him money. It's not your top news, is it? Well, it is to me. I mean, I've sensed undercurrent. Listen, he lent her 12,000 quid to buy the tenancy, and she decided to pay him back to the tune of about, well, 250 quid a month. 250 on top of everything else. Yeah. Well, how can she make it pay? I mean, from what I know of the takings, anyway. Exactly. I mean, borrowing that money was the worst day's work she ever did. I mean, she, she's forever robbing Peter to pay Paul. Oh, you don't think she's done a bunk, do you? No, she'll come back as cool as a cucumber. What's all the flap? Can't a girl have a day off? Oh, by the way, Alec, your monthly instalments, I almost forgot. <laughs> she'll go and empty that till, and when that power man arrives tomorrow, she'll give him the vat money, if now tells. And what happens when the fat man calls? Exactly. It'll be all hands to the pumps, love. Plunging necklines, minister. Hello, here we go. That'll be her. You answer it. I haven't the patience. Hello? Oh, yes, yes, this is the Rovers' return. Uh, no, no, not at the moment. Um, I think you better speak to Mrs. Turpin. She is the senior barmaid. It's the brewery accountant. She wants a word with Beck. Oh, blimey. <clears throat> Mrs. Turpin speaking. No, no, it's Miss Lynch's day after that. Perhaps you can phone tomorrow. No, <laughs> no trouble. Good afternoon. Accountant, eh? Uh, sounds bad. Well, I mean, it could be summer to now, love. On a bank holiday? Well, uh, perhaps he's a workaholic. <laughs> Maybe. On the other hand, there's nothing like catching folk off the guard, is there? Oh... door painted. Oh, uh, look, do you, do you know if they're in? It's, it's, it's urgent. He isn't. If it's him you want. It is. Uh, he works for me, see? He's got our van. He went off in it. I were doing my windows. What about his missus? Oh, I don't know what she's doing. I don't spy on my neighbours. Perhaps you think she's selling something. Uh, yeah. Okay, I'll, uh, I'll try again later then. Thanks. Linda! Linda! Thank you. 
Ah, Mr. Gilroy. I just thought I'd report in, like, job done and that. Have you seen it? Oh, yes, the, the jukebox. Yes, you delivered it then, have you? Yeah, it's out in the yard, as ordered. Oh, champion, son, I'm very grateful. Yeah, well, it, it's about the bill. We had a hell of a job getting it down here. We had to cut it down on a trolley. <laughs> Look, I tell you what, um, I've got plans for that jukebox. I reckon it's just the sort of thing this place needs. It could be a real money spinner. Now, are you a gambling man? Well, I have studied risk factors, yeah. OK. So say I were to offer you uh, and your partner, uh, in lieu of what you might call straight cash, uh, say I were to offer you 20% uh, of operating profits on the first week. You can stuff that, Alec. <laughs> I want a taxidermist, maybe. Look, I reckon it's 20 notes on the table right now. Oh, well, if that's the way you're talking. Well, hang on, hang on. Think about this. I've got a vote in this as well, you know. You'll be well advised. Are your brains going mouldy or what? You'd have to take 100 quid a week for us to crack 20. If jukeboxes made that kind of money, they'd have them wall to wall, wouldn't they? Has been thought of some. Never heard of Las Vegas. No. Still, if you want the reddish... Yes, please. It's all a question of timing, you see, Percy. I mean, a lot of folk that open video libraries have gone bust because what the business depends on is playback facility. Now, one of the main reasons for me taking the plunge was the increasing number of houses in this country that now have a video recorder. Well, you see, uh, I spent most of my time in, in public service one way and another. I was only tempted just once to go into business. I met this fellow you see at Bellevue Dogs and he'd invented a process for changing rancid fat into carbolic soap. And um, I often wonder what happened to him, you know. Oh, yes. Mind you, soap went, that carbolic took some beating. It's what the youth of this country needs. I thought that was National Service. Oh, aye, National Service and carbolic soap. Hey, hey how are you, love? He's quite the businessman now, isn't he? No, he does seem to have a knack, yeah. Well, I suppose you need money to play with, don't you? When I um, knew him, you know, he just had his ways like I had. Well, I think it was that spell in Dubai that set him up financially. Yeah, well, it's like me, really, you know, since Canada, yeah. Right, well, I'm going to buy everybody a drink. Well, you can have Percy. Gloria, you'll have one with us, won't you? Yeah, right. Have you seen better round? No. No. Gloria, when you have a second. I must say you surprised me just then. No? Taking the cash instead of the gamble, or put it another way, thinking short term. Can be a mistake, you know. What you need is a master plan. That depends, doesn't it, Alec, on what you want out of life. Some things you've got to grab while they're going. Ta -da, mate. Ta -da. Right, Alec. I expect she'll do face yet, yeah, then. Not yet. Well, look, I've got a dash off, but if you do see her, Tell her not to worry. There's no problem. We'll sort something out and I'll pop in tomorrow. She'll get the drift. And be good. If you can't be good, be careful. Hey, it's gone six o'clock. You think she'd show a bit of consideration and ring? Well, at least the coast's clear. Oh, there's worse sharks than him cruising around. I mean, that accountant sounded pretty grim. Did you call Stella Rigby? Look, love it. I've called everybody. Nobody's seen hiding the hair of her. <sighs> Come on, sleep here. Time for your medicine. Yeah, I must have dozed off again. You know, I feel right relaxed and peaceful. Mm. Obviously what I need. Blow all this being at folks beck and call. There. Right, what do you fancy for your tea, apart from triton onions? Don't even mention them to me. From now on, I'm going to be strict vegetarian. A bowl of clear soup and an ice cream salad, eh? Well, they say these nut cutlets are very tasty. We must try one. It's all in the mind, you see. It's all willpower, isn't it? You've got to concentrate on the, the more peaceful aspects of life. Mm. For a while, certainly. Plenty of fresh air, sensible diet, cut down on the drink, nice quiet evenings in front of the fireside. Aye, that's the prescription, I reckon. That's the secret of long life. Mm, I'm sure. You see, folk rush about and they're, they're anxious to make a bob or two. They're fools to themselves. This is the first time that I've shut the shop on a bank holiday in donkey's years. Yeah, well, I mean, that's our generation, isn't it, Alf? Hard work, we're bred in us. Aye, well, I've learnt my lesson, I'm telling you. I'll be shutting that shop regular from now on. Mind you, it needn't spoil our life, you know, in a quiet sort of a way. We can have many a trip out, have a nice bit of lunch somewhere, then look around the antique shops and such. Two old fossils in the twilight of our life. Hmm. Hi. Did you get uh, video for tonight, by the way? Uh, yeah, yeah, I nipped out while you was having foul two wings. Ah, and was he busy? 
According to Alan, he's not stopped all day. He's been coining it in. Hmm, happen so. And happen it's all talk and no, all. No, no, he has done well. I mean, I were there when he were cashing up, and honestly, the till drawer, it was full to bust. Hey, grab, grab, grab. Well, he's welcome to it, I'll tell Come you. Come on, I don't fret yourself. Fret it? Who's fretting, love? Look, it'll all come back on him, believe you me. Anyway, I'd have had to pay young Sally overtime, wouldn't I? Do you know, I think I'll have four two weeks before my tea. Why not? Ah. So what did you get then from to video place? Well, I didn't have much choice. I was hoping to get that one ooh, on Golden Pond, oh. you know, but it was gone, so I had to take what was left. Oh, yeah. What's it called? The Living Zed. Is that how you see it? Either that or we're both rotten, living for the minute, desperate for cheap thrills. Look, Linda, you're not being fair. It's just that with us, things run very deep. Oh, we're deep. We have emotional depth like other people get the flu. So we lie, and we cheat. Nothing must stand in the way of what we want. I won't deny I want you. How much? Like I've never wanted anything oh, else. Oh, that's not. You have to go higher than that, because I'm risking my marriage. You have to match that. I'm prepared to match you every step of the way. As far as this thing goes, I'm sticking with we it. We can't live at this pitch, Terry. Can't last. Just go. Take yourself off, please. Landed on me bloody doorstep, I were doing all right. I were a good wife, straight as a die, and you had to show up on the scene. Mist, if you had a shred of decency, you... <laughs> Father of us had a shred of decency. On your own warning line. Have we? Winking at me all the way back. Morning. Morning. Right. Do you want a cup? Oh, yes, please. Mind you, nothing like the warning lights they have flashing at me this morning. Yeah? I didn't know you had a motor. I've got a wife, though, haven't I? Sat there over breakfast with all the warning lights going at once. What I need is a manual. Then I can look them up, find out what they're supposed to be signalling. Well, why don't you just ask her? You've obviously never been married, my friend. No. I did ask her. I said, is something the matter? She said, no. I said, why do you look so miserable then? She said, I don't. I always look like this. Or hadn't you noticed? In the end, I just upped and left her, staring at the Weetabix packet, like she hated that as well. No sugar. Sure. She expects me to be a mind reader, which will be okay if I was, but I'm not. No. She's in a very peculiar mood. Like she's in the middle of some big argument with herself. I don't know. Still, I'm only telling you lads this is a warning. In case you ever feel the matrimonial urge coming over you. Think about me. Think about a good man who was once as footloose and fancy free as what you are. And now has daily aggravation over the breakfast table. We will. Won't we, Curly? Oh, yeah. So, belongs to Alec Gilroy, does it? It does. So now we've got to take it in. Do you think that will? I don't even know where she is. Never mind about what she might think about this flipping thing. You don't think anything's happened to her, do you? <sighs> Lovely. I know no more or no less than you do, which is that this useless article has appeared and she's disappeared. Sure. Well, it's been two nights now. And two days. Look, she can stay away all the night she wants, as long as she gets here in the daytime and gives us a hand. Anything else? <laughs> I don't know about. 
You are worried about her, aren't you? Well, I am a bit. I mean, it's like you say, you know, two nights. I mean, one night and you think, hello, <laughs> unavoidably detained, but two? Well, I mean, you don't know what to think. Then there's that meeting with the brewery. Do you think that could be something to do with it? Why would she be writing to Alec Gilroy? Hey. Here. I pick these up when I come in. That's her handwriting, isn't it? Yeah. Alec Gilroy, eh? Care of here. And as far as I can make out, it was posted in Weatherfield the day she went missing. Well, what do you think? I mean, do you think this is going to explain it all? We could always steam it open and find out. No. Could we? Oh, no. No, no, no. We mustn't think such a thing. No. Put it away somewhere safe, Glow, and, you know, we'll give it to him as soon as he comes in. I were only going to have a sandwich. I mean, I weren't expecting you home. Yeah, well, thought I'd make your day. Give you a bit of excitement. So, uh, do you want a sandwich or what? Yeah, sure, great. Oh, and I'll tell you what. I never asked you how you were for money, did I? I'm all right. I've still got some left from the weekend. Yeah, but, uh, here. There's Treat no yourself. No, I know, but I want to. I want you to spend it. Cheer yourself up a bit. Buy a funny hat and cheer us both up a bit. No, we've, uh, we've had quite a good morning as it happens. What about you? What have you been up to? Hey, Lord. What is it? What's up? No, just... Just leave me alone. What's the matter? I want to know. It's just the way I am at the moment. I'll be all right if you leave me alone. Come on. Why have you come home anyway? Is it to check up on me? Yeah, that's what it is, isn't it? I... I came to see how you were. Because of how you seemed this morning. I was worried about you. There's no need to be. Well, I think there is. You were crying a minute ago. Look. What is it? It doesn't matter what. But I want to know. Please. Yeah, well, I'd like to know as well, wouldn't I? I mean, one minute I come over all tearful and next minute it's gone. That of being a woman, I suppose. I don't believe that. Oh, so I'm lying now, am I? No. Will you tell me then, since you seem to know so much about it? You tell me what's the matter with me. Well, I don't know, do I? No, you don't. So just leave it, will you? I'll be all right. I promise I will. Okay. But it's not me. It's nothing I've done. No, no. Nothing you've done. Right, there's plenty of eggs in the fridge if you want to make an omelette or something. Yeah, I might. Do you fancy an omelette, Alf? Aye, why not, Holt? Just don't go putting him on your knee and giving him the bottle, that's all. <laughs> I won't. <laughs> right, I'm off. Mm. Uh, tell Get on with your measure, Smith. Bye, Spitfire, actually, oh. love. Hey, don't come rushing back, you know, because I'm quite capable of... Ooh, I don't know. You know, she thinks the minute she leaves me, I'm going to start collapsing all over the place. She only wants you to take it easy. I am taking it easy. Don't mean to say I've got to be completely useless. Mm -hmm. Hey, I'll tell you what. You see to Sarah, and I'll see about making us a meal. Hey, hey, no, hey! Sit yourself down. I'll be finished with Sarah in a minute, then I'll see you to the pair of you. You see, you're as bad as your mother you are. Do you think the strain of cracking a few eggs is going to put me out? No. No, well, I can make an omelette, you know. I used to fend for myself for years. Are you sure? Of course I'm sure. Look, look, I'm being calm, aren't I? Look, I'm walking about and I mean calm, aren't I? Yes. Yeah, well, I'm going to calmly break a few eggs and calmly make a zombie. <laughs> Silly granddad. Here to go, mate. No, oh, thanks. Suit yourself. So, how's Susan these days? Oh, beautiful, intelligent, adorable. Oh. Find yourself a new fella. Yes. Or all he does is tell me how great his wife is. Oh, in that case, <laughs> I'll sit down. Is that mine? Yes. Thanks, Tom. So, how's your business plan, then? Is she still working on that idea for children's clothing? Hopscotch, yeah. But I think she's beginning to lose heart, tell you the truth. So, she won't be buying you out, then? No, no chance of that. But I think she's done well achieving what she has. I never believed it would get that far. But she's still in there fighting, even though it is a losing battle. Ah, she's a determined woman, you see. Oh, you can say that again. This is the age of the determined woman, you know. I find it a bit frightening. This is it. Yes, love. Uh, quite a bit, sir. Half a lager. Have you got any hot pot butter? I've got a pan this big. 
Full of it. Oh, we don't want that much. It's just two portions, please. Oh, well. I'll give you a drink first. Cheers. Oh, and then we can sit down. I've been rushed off my feet since oh. I opened. Yeah, she's just not used to hard work, that's all. You know what? I'm doing two jobs there. Do you know that? It used to take Mr. Roberts and Deirdre Barrow to run that shop, but now it's just me. Yeah. Well, go over doing it. <laughs> That'll be two pounds altogether, love. Why, you frightened? You're frightened I'll be tired out every night. Too tired to do out my job to sleep. <laughs> She's talking about a job. Oh. <laughs> Who's winning? Nobody. Because Cool is not in the mood for playing darts, are you not, Cool? No. Nope. Oh, well, I'll give you a game. Unless you want to get off. What do you think? I think we ought to get off. I think we should have a drink. What do you want? A pint? No, just half will do me. I'll suit yourself. What about you? No, thanks. Yes, please, Gloria. Trying to cut down. Oh. Pint and half. Yeah. things at home then, all right. Oh, fine, yeah. Yeah. She's still a bit under the weather. I mean, I don't understand it. I don't suppose I ever will. No. Well, like I say, take me as your example. Stay single and stay happy. Oh, you don't really mean that, Pete. I mean, your wife struck me as being very nice. I wish I was married to someone like that. Oh, yeah. Suppose she's all right, really. She must be at a port with me. <laughs> yeah, you won't make a start when I pay for these. 501? Yeah. yeah. I might be on form today, I've got that sort of feeling. Yes, sir. I can see you don't remember me, Mrs. Tappy. Well, not to worry, most people don't. Jarvis is the name. I work for Newton and Ridley in the accounts department. Oh, yes, you once came here before, didn't you, to do the book? And found them all in good order. Yes. Is Miss Lynch about? Uh, no, not just now. But you know where she is, do you? She must be somewhere around. Um, can I get you a drink? Uh, no, no, thank you. Mrs. Turpin, the brewery are, are rather concerned as to Miss Lynch's whereabouts, which is why they've asked me to call in. You see, she had this important appointment she didn't keep, and now she seems rather difficult to get hold of. Well, is there a message I can give her? No, no, I, I think all things considered, it's probably better if I call back this evening, see if she's popped up by then. Yeah, if you like, yes. Mind you, if she hasn't, then I think we're going to have to start treating her disappearance rather more seriously, don't you? Good day. We're taking it seriously already. Do you know, that fella, he gives me the shivers. Try this one, then. You might have some information. Oh, yeah, yes. Afternoon, ladies. Never mind about all that. Effect. Come on, get through. We've got something for you. What's the matter? Come on. A letter. A letter? What sort of a letter? That's what we want to know. Come on, get through the get it open. Come on. <laughs> Stupid. Oh, no. Look, I know it's a private letter, Alec, but we are worried, and anything you can tell us... She's gone. What? She's gone. Done a bunk. Scarpered. Why couldn't she have said something, the stupid woman? Why? Yeah, read it yourself, why not? It'll be common knowledge soon enough. Is she all right? <clears throat> Dear Alec, I don't know where I'll be by the time you read this, but it won't be anywhere near Weatherfield. The fact is, I can't manage to make the Rovers pay and never will be able to. Even worse, I can't face you and everybody else, knowing you've all been right and I've been wrong from the word go. I'm sorry about the money. I always have been a loser and I should never have asked you to back me. Ah, oh, love that. Oh, I'd have helped her. I, I, mean, I mean, I would. I mean, I'd have altered the repayments, anything. Yeah. Yeah, we know you would, Alec. It's not your fault. I know it would all end in tears. All this damn silly nonsense about money and borrowing. Oh, you can't live in a fool's paradise forever, yes, can you? all right, all right. We don't need any sermons, thank oh, you. Well, listen, I'll, uh, I'll have to get back. Yeah. state she must have been in. Giving all this up and just taking off like that. Well, she's obviously out of her head, isn't she? I mean, she, she was that madness. proud the day she took over. Ooh, you've got a lot to answer for, you have. Me? Yeah. Me? All I did were, were try and help her. All I did was lend her money. Money that could have been put to better use elsewhere. Aye, and money that I'm not likely to see again now she's taken leave of her senses. All you did was put her into a position where she couldn't go. Oh, for God's sake, woman, I keep telling you I would have helped her if she'd asked. Helped her? You put pressure on her, you made things a damn sight worse. Oh, give me strength. 
right. And to cap it all, you've got that damn silly yeah. jukebox stuck out yes. in the air. Someone tells you we're going to foist onto it. Just her. because it would have made money for her. Made money for you, you mean? Uh, all right, Betty. All right. You just believe what you want. But it's true. I wanted to help her. I always have. <laughs> well, you've not made a right good job of it, have you? No. Well, I'll tell you one thing, if it's any small consolation. Mm. I'll have that jukebox out of here by tonight. It's a bit late for that, isn't it? Well, with a bit of luck, it might just be in time. Oh. I've never been on a sinking ship before, personally. But I should imagine this is very much what it feels like. So I think I'm entitled to salvage what little bit I can before it finally hits rock bottom, don't you? Well, I don't see why not, Mr Gilroy. You hang on a sec. He wants us to shift that jukebox to another pub. What now? Hang on. Uh, what time exactly would you like us to do it, Mr Gilroy? Yeah, yeah, I, I see. Could you hang on again? Any time after nine, because he's got arrangements to make, whatever that means. How much should I ask? Well, where's it to? Willow Park. Twenty. Right. Yeah, I think we can do that, Mr Gilroy. Right. Oh, not been a bad day, has it? Beach working for a living. Yeah, most things do. Got anything lined up for tonight? Nah. I'll start to stay at home with the missus. You know, I've been thinking. I'm going to try cutting down on the booze. I mean, it can't do you any good, can it? Not the way I've been packing it away. Suppose not. Only, uh, Curly's got a job lined up for tonight. Shifting that jukebox. Oh. You'll not be available then. Oh, I mean, that's different, isn't it? That's business. Yeah, of course I'm available. Oh, good, cos uh, I won't be. I've got this uh, rather heavy date lined up. It'd be a shame if I couldn't make it. Say no more. Me and Einstein will shift the music machine, and I'll probably drink less afterwards for you not being there, so you'll be doing me a favour. Right, we're shifting it tonight, as Teddy told you. Better jukebox, yeah. Right. And he's also told me how we can't make it, so it's down to thee and me. You can't? For our engagement. Oh, I see. We'll manage. No problem. That's the silver. Lovely. That's the copper. Uh huh. Here's the notes, and then are the checks. Checks? You haven't been taking checks, have you? Oh, let's have a look. No, you will not have a look. Now you just sit there. It's nothing to do with you. Look, you've got to be very careful with checks, though. Well, I was. I mean, I did exactly what you said. I just asked for the banker's account, then I wrote the number on the back. They are payment for goods, are they? You haven't been cashing them, have you? No. Oh, just ignore them. It's now to do with it. Well, when you take them for goods, next thing they do is ask you to start cashing them, and that's something we don't do, not under any circumstances. You didn't hear anybody speaking just then, did you? <laughs> Neither did I. Look, did, did you get him to put the addresses on the back? Don't answer him. Look, Sally, love, I don't know what we'd have done without you, honestly. Now, I'll get our float together and I'll pop in with it first thing in the morning, all right? Right, all right, then I'll see you then. Thanks. Bye, Mr. Roberts. Bye. Good night. Bye-bye. Now, what do I keep telling you? Now, in fact, what do you keep telling me, right? You're not going to have any interest in that shop till you're back on your feet again. Yeah, I know, love, but checks, I never it did like checks. It is nothing to do with you, honestly, not at the moment. No, well, I suppose... It's not. No. Right. I'm going to get checking this lot then. <sighs> but why don't you get on with this model thing I bought you? Where is it? Oh, you finished it. Sugden. What? Sugden. Percy flipping Sugden. He came round to see me this afternoon. And the only way I could stop him yachting was let him have a go with the, the model. I must have dozed off or something. When I woke up, he'd finished it. Me. Yeah, I thought it might be. Well, don't sound too enthusiastic about it. I'm not enthusiastic. I hate this. And why don't you tell me to go? Yeah, I should, shouldn't I? But you won't, will you? I nearly told him, you know. Pete, when he came home this dinner time. I nearly told him everything. And why didn't you? I couldn't bear seeing what it might do to him. He doesn't have to do anything to him, does it? Because he doesn't have to know, does he? No. I think we're both a bit upset at the time, don't you? Is that a good reason to be there? Yeah. It's because we're both very fond of her in our own ways. Yeah. I suppose. I'm just worried where she'll be and, you know, how she's going to manage. She can't have any money on her. Because it was lack of that that made her leave in the first place. Yeah, I've been wondering that myself. Hello. Oh, hello. 
Mission accomplished. You'll be glad to know your jukebox is now in its new home. Did it look happy? Very happy. Good. One pain, I suppose. Uh, Twenty, I think we said. That's right. Thank you. Terrific. There you go. Thank you. Oh, and uh, next time, can you take all those heavy metal records out of it? Because that's what takes the lifting. <laughs> <laughs> Pardon? It's a joke. Just a joke. Only just. Suppose you want a drink after all your efforts? Uh, yes, please. A pint. And Gloria. Hi, Ed. Yeah, go on then. Just the one. One's all you're getting. What do you think all that was about? Oh, I think they've been doing some bits of jobs for him. What, using your yard? Thank you. I find you so. Well, you want to be careful, you know. I mean, there's no telling what a fellow like that might be involved in. Like what? Well, I don't know, but you're always going on about him being a nasty, being a nasty piece of work. Well, I never suggested that he was into gold bullion dealing or drug trafficking like you're into. Well, some people are. Why not him? Tell me why not him. Because nobody seriously involved in villainy would employ Curly Watts. Oh, yeah. No answer to that. You've not seen that flat, though, have you? No. Hey, it's really nice and cosy. Well, we think so, don't we? Well, our main advantage being there's no Mrs. Hope. <laughs> <laughs> hey, when you finish your drinks, why don't you come back for a coffee? Or a lager? You've still got them lagers, aren't you? Yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah, it's all right by me. I uh, promised the wife I wouldn't be late. Oh, I'm sure she can spare you for half an hour. Go on. <laughs> oh, you're back then. Is Miss Lynch, though? That's the question. Uh, no. Uh, this is Mr. Um... Jarvis. Yes, you know, really, accounts department. Oh, really? Uh, oh, uh, Alec Gilroy. Oh, pleased to meet you. I control entertainments for Newton and Ridley. Oh, I thought I'd come across the name. Yes, uh, you're looking for, uh, Betta, uh, Miss Lynch? Yes. So, would I be right in saying that nobody's set eyes on her since she should have had her meeting with us two days ago? It's, uh, somewhere around that time, yes. Oh, dear. Well, we'll be in touch very soon, I dare. Uh, listen, listen uh, won't you uh, have a drink? Oh, I'd rather not, thank you. Uh, well, look, um, this, uh, this meeting that you were supposed to have with her, uh, what was it about? It's all right. I mean, you can tell me. I mean, I'm a friend, a close friend. I don't think I can disclose one of our tenants' financial affairs, even to a close friend. Look, I staked her in this pub. It's my brass we're talking about. Uh, so, what was it about? Well, she was due to hand over the final instalment on the tenancy. Instalment? I didn't know there were any instalments. I thought she paid the lot straight off. Oh, no, no. She was paying in thirds. There was the last third, £5,000, still outstanding, which she was due to hand over, but apparently she's thought better of it. Good night. It's no good. You better go. Be nice not to have to, though, wouldn't it? I mean, sometime. Not tonight, but sometime. Be nice to spend the whole night together. Wishful thinking. I didn't expect you back. It's just that Terry would just Don't. pass in. But you were. I wasn't. And he knows it. I do now. Oh, God, no, this can't be happening. Please don't let this be happening. I thought he was my mate. Then again, I thought she was my wife. Perhaps I'm just not such a good judge. We've got to talk. Have we? Of course we have, yeah. Terry, just go, will you? Just go now, please. I will if you want me to. Of course I do. Pete, let him go. Just let him go, please. You're going to be okay. Just get out of here. I will, if you just go, please. Okay. I'll see you.
All right. Go on, please. Didn't intend this, Pete. But why did you do it, then? Why did you have to do it? Just sit down, love. Please, sit down. to missing furniture. Laura has a few things to tell Mike in a fine romance. Stay with us here on Plus, home of TV hits.